What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to Spawncast episode 124. We're missing Max. He might be, maybe he'll stop in like later on or something. I mean, we're, we're, we're using like the Discord, so he can pretty much jump in and out pretty easily. Uh, and I believe Jordan is actually out tonight. He, he won't be around for, for the podcast tonight. But we got a, got a couple people here. We got RGT. Sean, what's going on, man? No, chilling, chilling. Good to have you here. Good to have you here. We got OJ. Player essence, what's going on, man? I am I am here, and I've been playing Fire Emblem. Surprise! Yes, <laughs> and then we have uh, we have Nate. Nate is uh, the one who who called Ori a while ago, and that seems to be like the 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 running thing right now for uh, Gamescom. So that's, uh, what, yeah. that's why he gets that's to be why. the big square in the middle. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's why I'm the big focus tonight. <laughs> He's the big square, man. He told us he told us a while ago Ori was happening. So I told you uh, in February. Was it that? I, I, was that that long ago? Yeah, it was February twenty second or February twenty first. I came out with the Ori for Switch. That's almost six months ago. If, it doesn't feel like it's been that long, man. I I think Discord trolls us because I was watching Avadon's podcast and the the dude that didn't have the camera was also in the center. Oh, see, <laughs> see, Nate, that means you got to get a you got to get a got to get a camera, man. <laughs> I, I thought about buying a Bray Wyatt themed mask oh, and wearing geez. that for the yes. podcast because I it's would, terrifying and it's also hilarious. I yes, I think that's an excellent idea. Well, if we get if we get someone else like MVG, if he just pops through the the chat or something and he jumps in, we'll, we'll be able to even it out. But for now, we're uh, we're we're rolling with with Nate, big Nate picture in the middle here. Um, but uh, yes, we're we're also streaming on Mixer as well. So we're, we're rolling through on Mixer and YouTube doing that again this week after doing it last week worked out actually fairly well after it kind of smoothed itself out uh, after about five minutes on Mixer um, and the quality was good. It didn't save the podcast over there, though. That's yeah, something we no got to figure out why. why it did not. I double it checked it the, and it's selected to save it. And it yeah, did not. I, I double checked, too. Yeah, I don't know why that that's the case. I saw a few other people complaining about it as well. So uh, maybe maybe it'll it was something they're working on i don't know we'll see we'll see what happens this week maybe maybe they'll get it figured out but we crossed a thousand followers on mixer already so thanks to everyone who's following us there um and if you're new to this on mixer you're browsing through there we do this every saturday night 9 p.m eastern time we talk about some video games so why don't we do just that what's everyone been playing this week i i know i know uh fire emblem is what a lot of us have been playing Excuse or I know me. I know OJ at least. <laughs> not me. Sean. Not Sean. Sean's not playing that. <laughs> I have played I have played two games this week. I Wait, played... Sean, have you opened Fire Emblem yet? Yeah, I've I've put like about I, I really only played like an hour or two oh, since okay. last week's podcast, but yeah, yeah I put yeah, about good. twelve hours into it now. Well we were uh, we were all working on reviews for certain systems, so we were we were kind of stuck on on that Sega Genesis Mini. Yeah, uh, that's what we couldn't talk about last week. But now the, the embargo, at least for the preview, is up and we don't have any footage to show you here. So we can technically talk about it quite a bit. Yep. But uh, uh, yes, you're playing. Go ahead, Sean. Tell us what you're playing. I played Sagebrush. Which oh, OK. Is that went a... in a different direction. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like a two hour. It's like a two hour game. It's just like a, a walking puzzle simulator. But it's about like cults and stuff and it's heavily um sort of replicated after uh jonestown which is something i i don't know i always like watching documentaries about jonestown because i think it's fascinating mm. um so i played that i beat it in one sitting um it was pretty legit uh but yeah all of my time's been on friday the 13th yep there it is friday the th okay so why should we play Friday the 13th, Sean? Because there's there's nothing like it. And the moments that happen, <laughs> the moments that happen in the game, the people you come across, like it's just it's just so random. You literally never know what the next match is going to be like, aside mm -hmm. from the fact that you're either going to be Jason and trying to kill everyone or you're going to be a counselor trying to escape. Other than that, you ne you have no idea what's going to happen. It's okay. true. I mean, I played a match the other day and the cops showed up, so a bunch of people were escaping, and this one idiot counselor, he was just in front of the bridge, he just kept dancing in front of it, and then a guy got into a car, and he was driving that way, and he ended up killing the counselor by hitting him with a car. Yeah. And I was like, that is the funniest thing I've seen in a long time in a game. So you're just, saying you're saying I should buy this then, Sean? Dude, it's it, if you hop online with us, <sighs> it's right. so much fun. I was playing it just a few minutes ago before the show. And um, so there was a really shitty Jason and like he wasn't really killing anyone. He ended up killing a bunch of people, though, because six of the people were by one of the cars and they're all trying to get in the car because the car had the battery and the gas. So I'm on the opposite side of the map. and I'm like, well, maybe I can find a battery and gas for this car here. So I ended up finding all the parts for the car, start the car by my 
myself just drove right out of there like it was nothing i was like see you later bitches and they're like oh man why'd you leave us i'm like yeah y'all, y'all were just on the other side of the map i'm okay. sorry it's it's downloading now it's it, it's 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 literally it, it just <laughs> oh we wood and i were wood and i you're have the, the you're let me know what your you're let me know what your gamer tag is on xbox you're getting it on xbox yeah it we're was 10 bucks on, but we're playing it on switch well this is awkward <laughs> <laughs> i thought you i thought you were gonna get it on switch no, i'm just really kidding I, I didn't buy it i just wanted to see what sean would say get all excited oh. about me buying it and then no i didn't, I didn't buy it. is it how much is it on the switch that's 40 bucks 40 bucks uh, mm-hmm. it does come physical though i did it does have physical. physical okay if they have physical copy that's not too bad and the but, physical uh, copy comes with like a little uh poster and some stickers and crap like that but wood and i were playing it um last night and we were in the car and for some reason like the game like glitched or whatever and i was like wood start recording something weird's about to go down yeah and so all of a sudden i transport to the opposite side of the map and like I'm like, what the hell is going on? So I run back to the car. Jason is just smashing the car over and over again, which isn't supposed to happen. The car starts flipping over. It picks me up and shoots me up into the air. And I'm like, what are you getting this? Oh, yeah, I got it all, man. I got it all. It's so funny. Just just so weird and random. It's just it's just so much fun. Like, it's crazy. (laughs) okay see that's i mean it sounds like there's some uh like some cool moments in that game but are are they going back to update it because i thought there was a licensing issue yeah they can't they well they can't include any new content but Uh, they are we've been we we played with one of the developers and he follows us on twitter now so we've been basically whenever we come across a bug we're just shooting it straight to him and giving them suggestions on what they can do to improve upon it because i've already put like over 50 hours into the game i'm pretty sure I am the highest ranked person playing that game. I'm oh, on the on the switch. I'm oh, a level wow. 30. Okay. I'm a level 33 and I haven't seen anyone. The well, highest I've seen is like a 26 or a 27. Well, there's wow. only about 15 people playing the game on switch. Oh, so. you would be surprised. <laughs> there's quite you know the dude who made the um who did the reaction earlier this year to the Star Wars trailer and he started crying when it was playing and oh, like yeah, yeah. a bunch of people roasted on my internet. We fucking ran into him. Well, well, that makes me want to get the game now. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking to him, and I'm like, that guy, <laughs> Eric Butts. It was yes, the Eric Butts. Butts. I was like, wow, what a small. We, you run into little kids playing this game. We we found like this little eight year old, and he he keep calling. He kept calling Wood Beast em Ups. He'd be like, Beast em Ups, come back, don't leave me. It was so <laughs> funny. We were crying, laughing, Beast like em Ups. It was it was crazy. <laughs> that game actually has like uh, has voice chat. Yeah, it's got native oh, voice chat. Uh, yeah, that's that's good though. It's good they include. I mean, it would have been weird actually if they didn't include that. Although I don't think I don't think Payday ever got it. So no, we no. never did. Did Payday ever get updated now I think about it? Did um, anyone ever buy Payday for Switch? I thought a lot of people bought it. We, we all did. A lot of people? I thought like more than like like they, you would think. I, I think anyway for that. <laughs> uh, uh, this is RGT's friend Dawn. <laughs> I have no idea who this is, but okay. <laughs> They they said they said uh, they wanted to say thanks for letting you <laughs> <laughs> hey, your DM, Sean. <laughs> no problem, no problem. <laughs> so they missed you a lot. You might want to, you know, get back. Yeah, to apparently them. you've grown a lot since they last seen you. <laughs> I've grown, yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, I also played. I did download Grandia. Did anyone else download Grandia? Or was it just me? I know oh, what okay. the Dawn reference is. Okay, the Dawn reference. reference it's it's from when i play uh my uh, mario ranking video in my mario ranking video i didn't put um super mario world as an s i put it as or uh, the god uh, cream of the crop i put it as excellent which was right below it because i didn't have a super nintendo and i used to play it over at this chick named dawn's house uh, I, was like, I, see, video, okay. I was like what's okay. up dawn hope you've been doing well oh see okay. that you, you know they watch your video then there you go yeah that's good okay that's like definitely that. like in the video. 100%. Go. okay people picked okay. it up before i did wow let's <laughs> go so i did download the grandia collection i played a bit of the first one i don't know if anyone else got it it sounds like sean's been stuck on friday so i guess not uh i, I, I think know. max did wait for a physical edition. i kind of feel like there might be like dude a they're physical they're gonna drop a physical you know they're going yeah. to someone's yeah. gonna do it limited run might do it uh who else is there was there super rare games someone someone's gonna do a physical and it's gonna be 40 bucks watch it's gonna be the same price i already yeah. paid for it yeah um and that's tough because nate you were saying you would actually consider just buying the second one for 20 bucks like if they split them up 
Yeah, I would have bought Grandia 2 for 20 bucks without a second thought. I just... Grandia 1's a good game. I just don't want to play it right now. And $40 just for the second one to me, it's just a little too high. But if, if it was a physical edition for $40, yeah, I would have done it, but not $40 digital. Yeah, I mean, you said, Sean, the second one's not even that expensive to get on the Dreamcast. Yep, I can pick it up right now. Game, disc, manual, $23.99. Oh, see, there you go. Get it on the Dreamcast. You're good. I mean, um, yeah, that's so easy to set up and everything. Just get it on there. Yeah. Hey, man, my Dreamcast got HDMI out. Your Dreamcast is super. <laughs> I wish my Dreamcast was supercharged. You know, you got that legit. You got that EA Need for Speed boot box uh, yeah, souped up. Um, Dude, my Dreamcast, my Dreamcast has Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I, it, is, the board actually will update itself through Wi-Fi. Is that actually a Dreamcast cool. anymore? Or did you make a new system? It seems like I know, made. right? <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, they're, they're working on the PS2 HDMI out. I'm on that. PS2 Slim HDMI, it's going to look ridiculous. So I'm ready for that. <laughs> they had that. You saw you weren't you weren't at too many games, Sean. That's right. The well, company, then. the company keeps doing those HDMI boards like the Dreamcast one. I think the N64 one. Uh, they're making a PS2 one as well. Oh, really? So, yeah, it's going to be a native like internal HDMI that's going to be soldered to the chip the exact same way as the other is ones. That Game Tech US. It's like, uh, yeah, I think the I think the brand is like Black Dog or something, but yeah, it's like Game Tech US, and then because I know on the board it's printed like Black Dog or something like that. Okay. Um, but yeah, it it looked good. They had it on display there. They were playing uh, Gran Turismo, and that like does 1080i actually, which is interesting, uh, interesting through component. So they had it running. It looked it looked clean. So uh, I'm I'm looking at, I'm looking at that because I wouldn't mind doing some like Need for Speed Underground two or something because I was a little sad after Need for Speed uh, uh, Heat got announced yeah are we gonna talk about that we I'm can very conf- i'm very confused i mean there's not a whole lot to say but i'm very confused by they're that gonna show thing. it at gamescom we'll, we'll have that as part of our gamescom talk I, the, the gamescom talk is gonna be so there's so much stuff happening at gamescom it seems so it's gonna be it's gonna be all over the place there um but uh evan yeah i saw you play no man's sky yeah looked at the new patch i never really gave it a chance prior to it it's all okay. right and okay. i went back and they patched and they're testing the 222 roll locking and overwatch so i've been hitting that okay. up as well did they turn it around in no man's sky did you get a chance to see enough of it still buggy as hell and okay. one of the main things i'm running into is just there's lack of streamlining so you're always doing busy work when you really don't have to so that's mm, kind of okay usual. Can I- can I ask Evan a question on that? Did you see the No Man's Sky VR at all? Did you mess around with that? I or don't have that set up. I kind of wanted to check it out. I've seen people doing it. It seems kind of interesting, yeah. but it, the core it gameplay, ass, man. Yeah, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll just be. I mean, I was watching a ton of it. Angry Joe was playing it, and it's like your like your arms like fidgeting like when you're like you know because he was using the the motion control. Was it's, it through uh, PlayStation VR? Yeah, PSVR. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, I would, that's what I would use. Too, the motion controls the, and depending on the engine, always fidget around mm-hmm. like that. It's been a problem. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It yeah, seems like I mean, it could I, be cool. I'm curious if it, if it supports PC VR because that obviously will give you like a better experience. But most people, I think, will use PlayStation VR because that's like the best selling, I guess, VR headset at this point. So uh yeah that's interesting i i might look at i still have no man's sky and that's just a free update isn't it evan yeah i mean it seems interesting mm-hmm. it's just once you start getting into the nitty-gritty of it and you're maintaining a uh, fleet and stuff and you're trying to repair mm-hmm. ships the fact that you have to leave your ship to then go repair a ship and then come back after all this walking around and figuring out what you need to bring back to it you start to realize you're gonna be doing that busy work for hours at the late game and well, not good let me ask you this. What's the file size on that guy right now? Oh, God, I got to look that up. Because I remember when it came out, it was like two and a half gigabytes because they uh, who you call it was like uh, Sean Murray that uh, was talking about how he thought about the switch at one point for No Man's Sky. And I was like, you know what? I don't the think the file nine, size was nine gigs, I believe. Yeah, so that's I mean, I the file size isn't big on that game. Yeah, a lot so of I'm it's like, procedural, actually, which is great. So That actually might work like if they decide to do that move it to the switch there was a game what was that what was that game called sean was it more morpheus what was that game called we played a while ago that um, looked like no man's sky more fight more fight more fight yeah, yeah yeah i guess it could work if they decided to do that huh. the engine how, how still feels yeah engine still feels rough so on arm i don't know I, how much better it's i gonna wonder be. if that engine's ever gonna be like clean you know like where everything's just good because they always they keep they're trying to expand further as well so i, what, I don't know what engine does it run on I thought it was a custom it's partly I havoc, it was though like they built yeah. it around a couple things 
Yeah, I don't know if that's ever actually going to like really work. Uh, we played the Genesis Mini. OJ, what did you play actually this week? If, I know you said Fire Emblem. Is that like your main your main go to yeah, this week? Yeah, Fire Emblem has been the main thing. I've been just kind of doing everything, getting my review ready, just because it's going to be a pretty big review. Or yeah, like, oh yeah, <laughs> look at the game. It's just i uh, finally got past i'm not no spoilers for me but i finally got past a certain point time skip stuff so that's mm, interesting mm, mm. um doing all that i'm like 50 50 60 hours somewhere somewhere in that range 50 60 hours of playing the game uh played that um been playing smash brothers like always always play smash we had a nice little tournament today so that was fun uh playing smash brothers and yeah and then also the all of the hoopla around uh hero being banned was funny in in a in Australia, he's been banned. So uh, we've been I've been using Hero a lot and just watching a lot of the uh, Hero gameplay, and it's 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 fun, it's fun stuff. Smash Brothers is always fun. There's always something happening in the Smash Brothers scene, like when you're playing online and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah. So uh, okay, cool. Um, yeah, because I, I, I'm still rolling through Fire. I don't think I'm gonna finish be able to finish Fire Emblem before Astral Chain shows. Actually, I might. Astral Chain is not until mm-hmm. like the very end of this month, so maybe I will be able you to get, finish. Yeah, that. you got a little bit under two weeks. I think I think I'll be able yeah. to get Fire emblem done by the end of this week i might be able to get it done so yeah i might try I to, to get it done. done i need to get done before control is on the 27th i think so i kind of want to try to finish it before control comes out because then i'm gonna do that control is only like 10 or 12 hours long i've heard mixed things about control i got yeah. a friend that's playing it and he's oh like, okay and he's gotcha. saying he's not really loving it too much yeah Who's playing it? uh he's... a friend oh okay <laughs> a, I don't yeah, want to out him. Is it Don? Yes, it's Don. It's Don. Don. Don is Don. Oh, it. Well, I mean, like, wasn't like Quantum Break? That was kind of like mixed on that too. When it comes yeah, to but like... I, and I liked Quantum Break. I, I think it's one of the the. I, I don't know. People hate that game, but I thought it was really. I, I think it's I, a, I feel the like, TV show. Crap, I feel like games right? like that yeah. always feel more like a tech demo than a game. Like there's something cool or interesting about them that not a lot of games do to that quality. So I mean, I don't know if they're gonna be able to give you a story that's interesting maybe maybe that's what he's got, not enjoying i just got an email you guys might have too from the nintendo online auto renewal uh notification i just got it on my phone it was like hey september 16th we're going to charge 20 bucks again for the year i did the uh twitch thing so i'm getting an extra i, did, yeah, I think i did the, i did the yeah twitch oh Mine no i just thought that was funny that's funny Let me double check um, those yeah uh, the genesis mini though sean we played a lot we played that quite a bit yes we did and so far so good they, they let us do previews on it which for some people th- this basically gave their entire thoughts on it yeah uh, i mean you still go through and play quite a bit but i don't think it's really good like we're not going to get an up like a day one patch or something on this thing um right. they did they are apparently sending out six button controllers though because that's what everyone complained about during the preview did you get an email for that uh no i don't think so yeah that, well they, apparently they're sending them out so six button controllers usb controllers from retro are coming uh oh, cool. probably because mo- like i said every one of us were like eternal champions with three buttons well even st- yeah and street, street fighter, fighter three, three buttons. buttons hold start and press b or whatever it is it's like yeah it's not gonna work so uh they're gonna send those out we played around i think everyone also played around with uh with other usb controllers like the playstation controller and everything to see if it'll work um but so far so m2 did a good job on, on on that the emulation that system and the quality the build quality is really good yeah the build quality is nice um i like the menu system you know it's a hell of a i I think a lot of it has to do with just how how crappy the the playstation classic was or just any of the at games ones i mean yeah even the playstation classic really suffered on the software side but like if you actually hold the playstation classic it is a solid like like it's a solid piece right like it it, it yeah. looks nice it feels but then you actually turn it on and you're like oh great <laughs> where's the like where's a menu system why is it so quiet yeah. why is it so boring i like that i like how you can categorize the different stuff you know everything seems to be looking and playing you know i'm sure i know um joe from game sack noticed that there was some very minimal audio lag um mm-hmm. on uh on the mickey game um and he made a comment about it so i'm sure you know some things may pop up like that but i think as a whole like so far everything that i've done with it and you know it's it's been legit like it's a get two controllers you get even if you're not going to play it all that much i mean it's still a very cool collector's piece if you like to just collect stuff like that yeah i think you definitely i think you have to have a obviously a bit of a a, a past 
with uh, with Sega to really get the most out of it. But like 42 games, yeah, sure. I think Tetris is kind of a throwaway game at this point. I will say that, but it's it's definitely there to like symbolize what that game was back then. Because um, if you actually play it, it's not a great version of Tetris anyway. <laughs> right. Um, but it's just cool to have it there. Darius was neat. Uh, yeah. but, but dude, the Wily Wars. Oh man, dude, Mega Man Wily Wars was it, it, it doesn't have slowdown anymore yeah that was that was the thing because i figured that it was going to run slower and that's why that was one of the games i checked out in my video and i was like oh wow this is running very smoothly i expected it to be much slower yeah. and choppier. yeah it, it is i have i have a repro card i even have a repro manual and case for it and everything um but yeah it like it's not choppy anymore like there were slowdown all the time in that game uh, and if you're a Mega Man fan, it's uh, you're going to get a lot out of it. Like there's an entire when you beat one, two and three, there's an entire like Wily's like castle thing set up. Yeah, that you play that was exclusive to that. And I remember because it went to uh, the the Sega channel, the right. Wily Wars. And I remember playing it there. And then after that, you had to get it in in Europe. Uh, and unfortunately, it wasn't easy to do that. So you get repros, but it's still slow down. Not this time, though. So. Well, they released it on cool. the on the Wii shop, too, didn't mm-hmm. they? Did they? I'm pretty sure they did. I know I they did. They did Mega Man 9, Mega Man 10. Or Mega Man 9 and 10 came out. I didn't know if they did why they were. Uh, you know, the check. Uh, some people said it was a little harder. It, it was a little harder as well. Uh, I don't know if they played around with the, the um, difficulty when Wily Wars came out, but it was definitely harder than like like Mega Man Two, for example. You'll get like beat Metal Man, and then you're good the rest of the way, but not not quite in um in the Wily Wars. But no, okay, I was wrong. That that didn't come out. Uh, it came out on on something. I thought like wasn't there a, a maybe a crappy handheld Genesis? I mean, at games has done some terrible things and, you know, we try to forget about them. But right, here we go. Uh, yeah. So it was on it was on an at games portable Genesis. It had Wily oh. Wars, uh, the new Challengers, Sonic one and two on it. Oh, I bet you the emulation of that Wily Wars is terrible. <laughs> oh, it's got to be rough. <laughs> it's got to be bad. Uh, yeah. So uh, good. Good. So far. Looks good. I think uh, image quality looks good. Uh, the controllers feel like the old school controllers. So uh, so far, I'm liking what I'm. 80 bucks for 42 games isn't bad so yeah i mean it's it's a nice system it looks nice it feels nice you didn't change you didn't change the language settings though i had it on english no no did you change it to japanese or german or anything like that no dude you have to it changes all the games it changes the roms even wait so all the games are on the system yeah, dude, you change it. Uh, mean Bean Machine apparently turns into Puyo Puyo Tetris. I noticed that uh, Bloodlines turns into Vampire Killer. That's yeah, because crazy. I did notice that because when uh, you pull up the menu, it says slash Vampire Killer. But I mean, it doesn't have like Musha on it, right? It cha- oh, no, 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 nothing like that. But it changes. It just, all the- it just changes the regions. For yeah, the game it changes power. all the box art, oh, okay. changes the languages, changes the cool. names. Yeah. I didn't even think so I didn't even think to do that. That was so cool. Uh, and then if you change it over to like uh, like German, for example, it'll change it to like the blue box arts and everything. OK, so it was kind of okay. cool. I, I kind of wish that they had just made it so that you can keep it on English, but then also change it to like the Japanese like box because some of that box art looks really cool. I wish they would have said something because I would have never uh, like if you didn't say that, I would have never thought to have changed the language because obviously I'm not going to be able to know how to read it. But that's that's interesting. Yeah, huh? it was funny. And like the thing they sent over, they were like, hey, you should try changing the language maybe something cool will happen i was yeah, like i'll change spell, the language spell it out for me like what was gonna do catch like, on fire or something <laughs> it was it was cool though it also cool. shout outs to to the to the boss man youtube gaming for sharing my sega genesis Dude, they did. sean's famous now man that was cool that was cool i finally finally got the ranks of youtube gaming's twitter so that was very awesome yeah, man that was, that was neat to say that was cool that was neat they're starting to pull a, a couple of creators up now. They did um one for Izzy. I saw he got he got a spotlight at one point. Yep, I uh, think you were. Yeah. Weren't you a part of that spotlight? I was like in the background. I was part of the video. Yeah, I, I think I think um Ant I think dude, uh, Ant got Ant one dude. too. I think yeah. Bob got one. Wolf Den. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. So it's uh, it's it's not too much longer until they accidentally shout out the podcast on a Saturday night. So right. We'll, we'll work up to that. You know, we'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, but yeah, so far so good with Genesis Mini. Uh, Nate, did you want to tell us about some weird game on the eShop before we do some super <laughs> chats and uh, move into Gamescom? <laughs> I mean, I can. 
okay yeah well you always you always show up with all the the strange ones and sometimes you yeah. have some you have some cool ones to talk about so hit us with one well this week's weird game is uh-huh. pantsu hunter back to the 90s which is oh. a visual novel that has an <laughs> anime style of the 80s and 90s and they really did a lot of work to replicate that look and the characters do look right from that era now the point of the game is you're a guy who talks to women and your whole I, your whole plan is to steal a pair of their panties because he thinks you get to know a woman from their panties. And it's, it's a weird game. It has each character has like 20 different endings. Like in the chapter one, the ending I got, I, it was slow poke. I stole one of her panties and I was supposed to fix her VCR so she could watch an anime movie. And my guy just had like, the path I was going, he had no interest in doing that. Every time I tried to fix it, he's like, no, if I fix it, I have to go home. Let me drag this out longer. And then another ending, I fell in the bathtub, and then she came into the bathroom, and my guy was just standing there naked. So she called the cops, and I got arrested. It's a, it's a weird game. I double-checked, and uh, YouTube Gaming still hasn't tweeted us out, and I'm not sure why. <laughs> Your story, <laughs> I thought, would have put it over the top for us. <laughs> uh, okay, how much is that game, Nate? uh i i don't know 10 bucks maybe 15 oh, okay it's a visual novel yeah so i mean like just pictures around oh, okay yeah it's uh, like a leisure suit larry from like the first person perspective i guess you could say okay okay, okay. It's, i got 10 minutes of gameplay footage up on the channel if people want to give it a view I might have to look at that because I, I I can't picture anything of what you were just talking about. So I might have to get some visual context that... into a bathtub and getting arrested. No, not not in like visual like anime style that you're trying to describe. It's is it's is that something. is that the is that like the one game you hung out and played? Nate, you played something else, right? I played Fell Seal Arbiter's Mark because it was really so that scratching. Game looks, that game looks it, good. It's really yeah, scratching it's the Final Fantasy Tactics itch. It's that's a really good game that people should be paying attention to on the eShop. No one. I, I or, mean, is anyone? Is it like? Is anyone really talking about it though? I haven't really no, seen anyone say anything about. It. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no one's really talking about it. And it's a shame because it's a really good tactics. It's game. like Final Fantasy Tactics, right? Yeah. The, oh, the problem. It did. The problem is Fire Emblem's out. Yeah, that's pretty much the big problem is that everyone's <laughs> focusing on Fire Rumble, but then this little indie company is like, hey, we made a good tactical strategy game. People are like, yeah, but I have Fire Emblem. That takes me 200 hours. I don't yeah. have time for your <laughs> Fell Seal, Seal Arbiter's Mark eShop game. And the it's a shame. Way- if it came out like two months ago, I think it would have got a lot more attention. The only way I'd really get any attention right now is if it literally just was Final Fantasy Tactics. Yeah, and they could easily, it could easily be called that and people really wouldn't be able to tell much difference mm. and it's a shame because the game should get a lot more attention it's a really good tactical strategy rpg and then i assume you just, you played fire emblem as well yeah i played fire emblem yeah. turok 2 oh, did you turok guys, 2 doesn't have the online man did anyone pick up the uh limited run turok what's that like how much is I, that thing i think it's almost, like 80 bucks or something right you can get you can just get the individual games in a normal case for 30 bucks a piece or you can get an awesome edition where the games come in an N64 style box with like a steel N64 cartridge that does nothing. Mm-hmm. And that's $110. Yeah. That's that all sold out. I got the dual pack of Turok and Turok too. I think it was 60 bucks for the two of them. If it comes like in a different package than if you buy the games individually, I mean, hell I figure my parents paid $70 for Turok one when I got my N64 back in the day. So, I mean, it's technically cheaper. Hmm. Okay. Technically. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't get any of that. No, I played the second one. Uh, there's no. They're missing the online multiplayer. Apparently, they're like putting it in at some point, or they're talking about doing it. It's so. kind of back and forth. It looked like initially uh... they said that the multiplayer was going to be in, but then I think, um, I think it might have been Game Explain. Yeah, Game uh, Explain reached out to them, and it they kind of changed their tune. So mm. I don't know. That's kind of weird if you think about it. Like. Yeah, because that actually it's it's pretty neat. If you go on like Steam or Xbox, they they both have the online for it. And when it was popular, which I think people probably moved on from it already, but you could still set up rooms with friends and do it. Uh, it actually was kind of neat to see Turok 2 just online like that. So uh, yeah, that's, that is weird that they don't have it. I mean, the single player is still fun, but um, no, we'll see. Maybe they'll add it. We'll see. 
Um, but yeah, Turok two is that a was that everything, Nate? He played Friday. He played Friday. He played Friday. I yeah, yeah. I've been playing Great Friday video. the thirteenth on the Switch. Go Friday. The I don't. 13th. It's so weird. Like I actually, this was a weird conundrum that I know nobody will be able to understand. I was gonna play Fire Emblem, but I had taken the cartridge out because I put I was playing Friday the thirteenth the night before. I put the switch on. And I was saying, I was like, oh, I have to get up and switch the game Wait card. Wait a minute. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to play Friday the 13th instead. Oh, no. The digital and era is creeping so, up to Nate. <laughs> I felt so disappointed in myself. I was like, I wanted to play Fire Emblem. I just said, never mind. I'm going to play Friday the 13th instead. Oh, and, dude. You, and it was so good, wasn't it? It dude, was I'm, fun. I actually had some of the best matches that night where... Like I, I watched the woman try to escape in the car, and Jason just beat the hell out of the car, then grabbed her out of it and murdered her. And then another guy was just—he was running by me, and Jason was stalking him. I just watched them walk right by me, and I just proceeded to get into the boat and drive away. I, love I thought. The boat. Wait, I thought you said you didn't want to get. It sounds like digital is what you should be buying, Nate. Well, some I certain like, games you I should prefer be buying Grandia one and two of. digital at this point. No, I'd rather have the physical but copy if it's, of But that. if it's across the room and you're on the couch, you're never going to play Grandia. Wait. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it, Friday the 13th is a game that's so <laughs> stupid, but it's fun. And you don't know why it's fun. It's fun because it's so dumb. Look, I, I know we made I know we had the long running joke about modern combat. And I mean modern combat wasn't <laughs> wasn't it wasn't a terrible game, but it was painfully average. So wait, you guys yeah. were you guys were joking about that? Yeah, for the most part. I mean it was oh. it was fun, but you know, it was it was painfully <laughs> average. Whereas this is like an actual fun game, especially when you're playing with either really good people like your friends or just really bad people or just really random people like it's, Look, it's, if you're yeah, not you, if you're you not really underwater don't. like you are in modern combat, I'll check it out. I mean, you really you don't know what's ever going to happen in a match. Like I had some like eight year old kid who was just running around and Jason's chasing him, and the kid's just yelling, "Is like Jason, leave me alone? No, Jason, I want to be your friend." And then all of a sudden, the kid's just dead, and it, like you start laughing because the kid just got brutally murdered. And it's just this random nonsense of people will be sitting in a room and they'll be dancing. And then Jason, yeah. then Jason's destroying the door, and they're still sitting there dancing because they know they got like ten seconds before he's gonna get through. And then they jump out the window. Jason teleports; he's right there. And then like they'll both be standing next to each other, and the person will just betray their friend to so they can get murdered, and the other one escapes. And you're like, what the hell is going on? At, at the end of the mm. day, Nate just likes killing kids. You know, just <laughs> I've only been yeah, Jason right. once. <laughs> I did shoot one of my. Does it just randomly well. like pick somebody to be Jason right in the beginning? Yeah. So if you have a full lobby of eight people, seven of them will be counselors. One person will be Jason. You can kind of tell if you're going to be Jason or not by because you can choose a preference of your Jason, just like you could choose a preference of the count, uh, counselor. And each Jason has different strengths and weaknesses. I actually just changed up my Jason to Jason five because I really like using him. And he has he probably has the most brutal kills because he has like gardening shears. And there's one where like you stab him in the stomach, you chop, you, you use the gardening shears to chop off both arms and then you snip off their head. <laughs> yeah i've seen that, that one a lot <laughs> uh let's move on evan do you want to hit us with this uh, uh discord question while i get go through some of the super chats here all right i'll go with the basic one if you had a choice between a new advanced wars or a new battalion wars which would you choose and why oh I, I i i'm gonna go with advanced wars but that's tough i mean we kind of have war i mean we kind of have war groove uh yeah i'll go with it like how big is the advance is it like they do like what they did with fire emblem if they, they do what yeah. they did with fire emblem then advance wars yeah for sure. I, I think i'm gonna go with advance wars yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna go with battalion wars i love advance wars but i think you would have to do a lot more like you said you would have to make it like a fire emblem transition to it whereas battalion wars you kind of have the groundwork for something like that i'm surprised we haven't gotten a new battalion wars because i think that could be a great online game exclusive for the nintendo switch coming to us from nintendo because it just lends itself to that sort of stuff i used to play the battalion wars on the wii online and i had so much fun playing that uh let's uh let's go through some of the the super chats and everything i'm actually gonna start with the one through stream labs which is from uh ibrahim saying can't wait for gamescom this week spawned it really did a good job hyping it up stay awesome as always thanks ibrahim yeah i i'm getting more and more excited for gamescom which we're going to be touching on that uh pretty soon here but 
it's it, it really I don't I don't think it was on most people's radars. And all of a sudden now we're a lot of people are really excited for this convention coming up this week. Um, so I, I don't know if you guys were really like looking forward to it. Then uh, then all of a sudden it really started getting hyped up or if you guys look through like forward to it for a little while now. Ever since um, they started talking about it more and more and mm-hmm. talking about what's kind of going to be there, I've definitely had my eye on it. I think it. it's when, really when Jeff Keighley was like, hey, we're doing this opening night and there's going to be 15 publishers and developers there and all this stuff with like new game announcements. Once they say new game reveals and announcements, it, it gets exciting. So um, let's uh, let's go through some of these super chats here. Uh, Katana Riku says, what is this song? It's really good. I think that's for the uh, the pre-show, Evan, the 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 song you have playing there i gotta look it up it's one of the uh the free use youtube songs that they have okay we'll, we'll get back to on that one katana riku um we'll, we'll double check that one before we go off air uh miguel says gamescom sounds amazing this year uh you know what you know what's interesting is what happened last does anyone even remember what really happened last gamescom no it no. was just the same games that were at e3 there like, was nothing anything like spectacular there was, yeah there was a few like new announcements here or there but it was nothing the jurassic park major. park builder that that was uh that was at gamescom last year yeah or microsoft remembers of that. age of empires i believe uh probably a controller and, and then xbox one controller and then i think the PUBG themed xbox one if i'm thinking that's, right that's not anything I think that oh. was re- yeah. I think that was <laughs> That's the big everything. There. But now, like, yeah, look it's at a hell of a show, right? But look at the difference now. They they have apparently almost four hundred thousand people attending. Wow. Yeah, Gamescom is really big every year, which is interesting. But this year, it sounds like they they're like it's almost like a I don't want to say a shift from E three, but it 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 feels like they're doing a bit more work here than last year. Does it? Does it really? You don't, you don't think so? I mean, they're doing an opening night oh. live with Jeff Keighley and everything. Well, yeah, they're, they're doing that, which they didn't do last year. Yeah. So. Yeah, but I think that's just kind of raising expectation. Yeah, but it's like well, Sega, Sega's teasing a new game. People, people are like, oh, my God, Gamescom's going to be awesome because Jeff Keighley's involved. Jeff Keighley <laughs> would oversell a hot dog. Saying okay, it's the greatest wait a minute. Food injection of all time. And then wait, they're like, no, it's a beef hot Wait dog. a minute. Let me channel my inner Canadian here. All right, wait a minute here. Just just, just, just give this guy some credit, okay? He's responsible for the announcements of Bayonetta 1, 2, and 3 coming to the Nintendo Switch. He's also responsible for Joker coming to Super Smash. The announcement of that, that was at the Game Awards. He's also responsible for, what else did he do? Marvel Ultimate, Ultimate Alliance, Alliance 3. 3. Yeah. That you, come on. I mean, he's the guy who puts this together. Can we give him a little bit of credit here? Just a little bit. That was those are pretty dope. And what was it? Uh, what's that game that people are playing? Um, I don't know. If people are playing it. Epic makes it. It's like a multiplayer. Forgot what it is, but people couldn't play it. But anyway, there was a cool game that there was another announcement there. I forgot what it's called, though. There was a new game from Epic and it's like a four player co-op game. And it just recently it came out on the Switch, but nobody could play. It. I remember when it came out on the PS4, nobody could play it when it first started. But I forgot. Dauntless. There we go. That was a new announcement. Yeah, that was a new announcement from there. There was lots of new announcement games at the Game Awards. Like, can we give him a little bit of credit? I mean, this if they're getting him to organize it, I think they said, John, you had made it, you made a video, but I forgot exactly mm-hmm. what you said in the video because I was on the treadmill. And I was like, <gasps> but anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, all the stuff that they're doing. Yeah, there's like 15 different or like 10 15 15 different, different publishers, developers, and then announcements and everything. New game announcements, all this stuff. So. I mean, it, it, I think it looks better than last year. What did they do last year at opening night? I don't think they did anything. I don't, I don't think, I think that what we look forward to is inside Xbox last year, right? That was it. And then Nintendo just dropped like a pre recorded indie event, right? Um, or was yeah. it streamed? Was it live streamed? No. Uh, last year's. I don't recall if it was live stream or just pre-recorded i thought they just dropped it because it might have just been a pre-recorded like 20 nintendo minute uk right like dropped it yeah it was only a european because we made a big deal about this one being different because it's at like 9 a.m or or whatnot eastern well this one's finally actually like worldwide it's, yeah it's like a like they even took the branding and everything so um i don't know it's it just seems like this is for some reason a bigger bigger gamescom than usual um you said say i mean we talked about it i talked about it in a video too but like uh sega is gonna have a trip a triple a triple a <laughs> game you know uh there so that's also that's that's different right yeah, sega, yeah. let's see there yeah we're, we're gonna move into nice. our gamescom talk with that because so, yeah, i want to so. see sean sean thinks he figured it out we'll, we'll talk to him well, about that uh, are you talking about based on the newest tease yeah yeah we'll, we'll get into that if these super chats we'll, we'll roll right into gamescom so sean can can explain to us what it is <laughs> uh andy ackerman uh said i told you it was coming oj i had to sean love you brother 
He, I guess he did the dawn thing. That uh, it threw me off for a loop. I was like, oh, that came to me. Uh, uh, Joe says, uh, why, why can the lack of a physical copy be a big deal to some people? I get the usual arguments, but if it, it's a good game, who cares if it's digital only? I mean, that's definitely a fair argument. Um, what, what about DuckTales, though? What if that wasn't physical? Yeah, and that that's definitely one side of it. And then pricing, I think, is definitely another is another side of it. It's hard for me to spend, you know, 40, 50, 60 dollars on something I can't hold in my hand. You know but what I'm saying? Resell. What about reselling? What about um, being able to like backwards compatibility? If you can't transfer over your uh, your safe or, like, you know, the digital purchases, mm -hmm. if you can just have it to where you can just have it right there. You know, I mean, there's a lot of reasons why people, you know, physical and digital. I mean, the only positive of digital is you can be lazy as hell. And it, it you know what we I'm just, saying? That, that's we just heard Nate. Yeah. You want to get up and yeah. cartridge, man. Digital and is I, always convenience. Yeah, yeah it's for conven buying, I, for using. But there's no it it just basically comes down to physical has value that digital yeah. does not you can't resell your digital games i mean i bought fire emblem digital even though i have three physical copies i bought it digital because i i wanted to just you know just have it on there at any point you know and same thing with smash brothers you know like i was gonna i mean i got a digital code i got a review code but i would have bought it digital myself you know just because there's certain games that i want to have on there but i still buy them physical so i could still have that copy like, i'll never buy a big game from like nintendo so then make digital only like that i'm that i'm really i'll never do that i, I want to have the copy of the games. right and i mean when you get review copies of games nowadays you know nine times out of ten you're getting a digital copy and mm -hmm. so while i love you know the convenience of it you know you don't have to wait for the company to mail it for you get lost in the post or something like that you know, I still like to, I mean, just like Friday the 13th, like I wanted that game physically. And plus they included some extra goodies that you don't get in the digital version, you know, some physical, tangible goods as well. So, you know, if you're looking at the same price of a game, why wouldn't you want it with the extra stuff? I think, I think when it comes, I think we're obviously specifically talking about the Grandia collection um, that sort of spurned on this thing with a game like the Grandia collection. It should have been a physical game because these were physical games. You know, I don't think a lot of people are going to go out and get the Grandia collection to that aren't really familiar with the games. I think this is appealing to people that were familiar with the games. That would be like Panzer Dragoon not getting a physical version. Ooh, that's going to be that's going to be crazy when that thing comes out. And that's, yeah. that's really cool to see. I think there's also people are concerned that there will be a physical copy of it and they're like holding off now. So that's yeah. Uh, yeah. That, also, that is quite a quite a uh, rabbit hole to go down like taking like i don't know if people don't do this anymore but like taking a game to a friend's house you know whereas uh, having to migrate an account that's what i mean you can't but do you big deal back then <laughs> yeah i mean like i mean it's not as much of a big deal today but it, you know it is nice to have it to where you can just say hey you can just play the game right here instead of having to say okay well we have to put my account import my account on your switch so we can put this game or bring your switch or any accounts you know so it's just nice to kind of just play a game you know and just like have it right there so there's lots of different things like physical versus digital uh matthew hammond brings up the whole nintendo soundtrack situation saying that is nintendo only taking down youtube videos without gameplay why is nintendo not using their nintendo switch online app to stream slash download songs that was actually one of the topics so we can just go over that now um while we're here nintendo taking down soundtracks seemingly from videos that basically don't do anything other than play the soundtrack and technically they can do that it's a slippery they, they can. slope, though. Yeah, I, I mean, that, yeah. If the videos aren't monetized, if there's monetization, okay, I somewhat understand it. If there's no monetization, you can't buy these soundtracks anywhere else. Yeah. Like, unless you're buying the actual physical soundtrack off of eBay for Super Mario 64. Like, I don't know. It seems like a weird thing. It's. It seems like like they're like Matthew's saying that would be a great bit of value to add to their switch online app. If they have like their own, like Nintendo radio station, or Nintendo Spotify. And it's like, it comes with your Nintendo online subscription. This... Uh, that makes too much sense. Come on. Yeah, now. That's way too forward thinking. For <laughs> that's it's, actually smart. That's pe that's something that would make people. It happy. doesn't even seem like it'd be that difficult for them to like, like they'd probably put like a team of like five people on it and it'd be done in like a month or two. And it's just like, Hey, you can stream all these songs. And we'll keep adding more and more. And it just comes with your $20 a year subscription because we already have them anyway uh that i i yeah uh, i don't know that that is that is a weird head scratching moment there um i don't know that would actually what's interesting about that is their their nintendo online service might be signed up for for people who don't even have a switch 
just yeah. to get that Spotify. Yeah. Oh yeah, you, I think you could. I mean, if you said you get all the, you get um all these Nintendo soundtracks. Sorry, my computer started playing audio of something and it freaked me out. Um, <laughs> if you get all these, you know, you get all these Nintendo soundtracks, twenty bucks a year. I I think people would hop on that. I mean, why wouldn't? Yeah, I? especially after like high quality and everything, and you can do yeah. like that download for offline play thing where the app like just downloads to your phone and like locks it into the app but you can yeah i think i think that'd be really cool if they if they did that which probably means they won't but all right uh joshua uh de neuer says happy saturday uh let me have fu game crew says uh beard boys unite boys <laughs> you can see them <laughs> out uh, for the podcast tonight, they did the same exact message again. Yeah, he, he said he <laughs> and then shortly and... after said, "Oops." <laughs> yeah. That actually makes sense of the name. Then, all right, cool. Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> knowing them, that's very good character for them. Uh, we'll check them out. They're they're down in the chat. Uh, and uh, we have uh, Agrius says, "Any word on Bloodstain being patched on Switch? Apparently, they're moving to do one big patch rather than a bunch of smaller patches." And that was the last update that we heard. Yep. So uh, I assume you're going to eventually see like a five gigabyte patch or something pop up and then you, you download that. Uh, but no, no word on timetable there. Uh, Lod Mott says, I love how Sega hasn't put out any hardware in 20 years and they finally put out the Genesis mini and oh, and totally stumped you with the CPU. Yeah. Also, I actually want the three button controllers. Yeah. The, the chip is new. It appears because it wasn't just me. Everybody opened it, looked at it, said, uh, that's not, that's not a normal chip. And if you go on their website, it says you have to message them for more details. So I almost wonder if the chip was created specifically for the Genesis Mini and that there is some sort of uh, confidentiality thing still in place for that chip. It's very weird, though. Um, I, I had the I had the thought of maybe M2 even working with them to maybe make that. chip. I don't know. It's very odd that they wouldn't just use something like what the Super Nintendo and Nintendo Classic are using, which are very basic chips from uh, from all, like an all winter chip. Uh, Two uh, Bitty says, "Why doesn't Nintendo do big IP crossovers like Smash for other types of games? Super Smash RPG, Super Speed Racers, Nintendo All Star Strikers, and ideas." I think if they did a, a Mario Strikers with other like all like a bunch of Nintendo characters, that'd be cool. They kind of did with Mario Kart, kind of. Yeah, they did right. that. Yeah, Mario that's Kart true. Has Inkling, has Link. You know, that's so. true they did that they did add a bunch of characters there yeah if they do mario I, strikers i'd love to see that though i, I think it would look like smash would lose its novelty if like every single game just started being like that like i'm not sure if every game being like smash where it's a crossover for everything i think smash mm -hmm. is unique and fun because it, it's the one game that you can count on it doing that but if every game started doing that i don't know and those games don't really need, i mean like mario kart is just like you have like inkling but it's just like you're just racing in a car it's more about the cart more so than the character but Okay, well, let's uh, let's move into uh, some of our topics here. We have Gamescom. Nate does not seem sold or excited for Gamescom. Nate, Gamescom, what's going on here? Gamescom has always been the E3 after party. Mm. It's where they bring a lot of what was already at E3 to the European crowd. Because let's think, Tokyo Game Show, Japan, E3, America, Gamescom, Europe. Not it's not none of these are like worldwide events in the sense of where the publishers are saying we have to go to Gamescom to make this huge worldwide announcement as far as like a third party. Like they don't go there, all these companies to do that. They kind of say we're going to bring a lot of the E3 stuff to the European media who does not attend E3. So we're going to see a lot of repeat content from E3 in terms of trailers, demos and stuff like that. Like, yeah, there'll be some new announcements. Obviously, we have like Nintendo's the indie world thing broadcasting the day before you have sega teasing their triple a announcement so there will be some cool announcements it's just it's not a monumental event well how, why uh let me ask you this why didn't um why didn't ea do need for speed at e3 and said they're debuting at a gamescom because e because <laughs> it's racing europe loves racing right but That's last year the they market for that game. you have a payback debuted at e3 and then they just followed up at gamescom this time they just seem to skip e3 completely despite having a pretty lackluster showing i don't know why they didn't just show need for speed there ea is seems like they don't even want to discuss this need for speed for this i year. noticed they that wait until the last minute. they're like <laughs> yeah this is coming out in like two months look at it okay bye well the it thing i didn't get about the game was like when they showed uh, the graphic of it I was like, oh, shit, this is going to be like 80 supercars or something like that. Like Miami probably, is, yeah. Yeah, and then it's just like, 
oh, it's 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 Need for Speed. Here's the gameplay. It, it looks like Need for Speed, and I was like, oh wow. You, you know, know what? That's... You know, what I was thinking about this, Nate, because you mentioned that. I almost wonder if they're trying to kind of incorporate the same strategy they did for Apex Legends, where like Apex, they didn't they didn't push it heavily before it came out. They didn't really say put EA anywhere around it. It's almost like they're announcing this. They're going to show it, but then they're going to bring it out like a few months later almost. So I don't know if they're trying to cut down the time between reveal and release just because EA is known to do loot boxes and everything. Uh, but apparently this won't have at least the the speed cards or whatever they were that were in payback that were really annoying. Those won't be in this apparently. But I mean, this they've lost track of what made Need for Speed good yeah, 10 probably. years ago. They definitely did. Now I mean, it's just kind of yeah. like, they're like, look, a car, it looks good. We don't know what the hell we're doing with this franchise anymore. We don't even know why we keep making them because no one's buying them. Dude, I was trying to think of like the last really good. I, I think Underground the last, 2. To want I, the really good Underground 2 or Most I mean, Wanted. Yeah, yeah Most, most wanted, wanted, I think. Yeah, I Carbon was good, wanted. but that was before Most Wanted. Most Wanted was probably the last really good one. Not the remake one or not the next one because they named another one just most wanted the one like back that was on like the uh xbox xbox 360 i, I like that one so really that one was great I, yeah that one was great the one on the 360 it was like the cross gen title that no, was no, the, the, the other one the other one the one that was 20 like it was 20 2012 2012 the one. Most one. yeah the newer one yeah, yeah i mean you, i like that game i, I had you? a lot of fun playing that game yeah i mean it was a it was just, but it just seemed like Perfect. I mean, it wasn't new. Nothing yeah, I wouldn't all. say it was. I, I wouldn't say it was great, but I think it was the last enjoyable one that I uh, actually well, was looking. What, what was the playing. last one that you thought was like, "Yo, this is like a triple A game"? For me, it was like Most Wanted or Most Wanted, Need yeah. for, like Underground too. Like back then, yeah, I used to think these were like too. these were like top tier games. You know what I'm saying? Like you would go buy it day one. It was like yeah. that type of game. Whereas now, it's like it's not even close to being that. You know? Like, <laughs> uh, I do have. Uh, confirmed appearances and then all of the publishers that are going to present at the event with new announcements or new content. Uh, and then we have some of the confirmed stuff that's going to at least be there for now that like it's been announced ahead of time. Uh, so I can actually go through those. This is all going to take place. It's going to be a two hour presentation. It looks like with Jeff Keighley. Uh, that's going to be Monday for, uh, for the U S is going to be 2 PM Eastern, I believe. And then 11 AM Pacific. Um, there is the premiere of Disintegration, which is yes. the first person shooter from Private Division. There's an announcement of a new title from THQ Nordic. I, I was hoping to be a remaster of Time Splitters, but they just hired the person to, to come on and do that. So uh, I guess that that won't be. I don't know what they're announced there. It could be anything. Uh, apparently they have like 80 something games in development or something crazy. So it could be anything. Uh, new look at Death Stranding. I, I guess that shouldn't surprise anyone. It's Jeff Keighley and he's inviting kojima to be on stage i guess with him exclusive look at campaign mode for gears 5 haven't they <laughs> have they have they not shown that yet Is no, this the first they, time? they haven't shown the campaign at all the game's coming out in what that game's weeks? out in like three weeks there was a big argument about that game on my podcast <laughs> so i was just like yikes <laughs> how have they not shown the campaign for okay all right sure uh unless they're trying to like hide some serious plot elements i don't know that's weird they basically have highlighted the key plot element of the game of her and her connection to the queen and her bloodline so i mean it's just their, their whole marketing with gears 5 has been awkward yeah i don't really know what that's a okay interesting so all right we'll go with that uh and then there's gameplay premiere of predator hunting grounds that might actually be something you want to hey, look at sean yeah. yeah i didn't realize that we we're going to show gameplay of that i've actually yeah. been looking forward to that game you might want to look because that that sounds like kind of that friday the 13th style yeah except okay, it has the predator and he yeah. did cool stuff uh gameplay you might have to plug your ps4 back in <laughs> uh, gameplay sean still hasn't plugged it. you haven't plugged that thing in have you not in a while. No, you got no do time. <laughs> uh, hey, Evan plugged his PS4 in before you did. Play right. Samurai Showdown. And I, I put my new really Spider Man. It. There you go. Sp hey, Spider Man's good stuff, man. And then I unplugged. And I haven't played Spider Man since. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've been playing my Xbox more, mostly because I've been playing Halo a lot. But uh, uh, gameplay premiere of Need for Speed Heat. We'll see how that goes. I think it's just going to look like regular Need for Speed, but all right. 
Uh, special announcement for Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Uh, and then Destiny 2 Shadow Keep cinematic yes. trailer reveal. Yes. Hey that's man, all been waiting for. That's, that's 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 on the way with Stadia. It's all it's good. A Stadia, <laughs> Stadia triple A game. Hey, don't make fun of my Stadia starter pack. <laughs> uh, don't make fun of my Stadia starter. Pack. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, and then, Stadia but boy. let's take a look at all the publishers that are present, and that includes 2K Games, Activision, Bandai Namco, Bungie, Capcom, Electronic Arts, Epic Games, Google Stadia, uh, Coke Media, Deep Silver, Private Division, Sega, Square. Sony Interactive Entertainment, THQ Nordic, Ubisoft, Xbox Game St- Studios, and then it just says and more. Mm-hmm. That's I mean that, that's, that's a lot of people or a lot of companies going to be there. Um, you're not you're still not sold on this at all, Nate, as being no, better this... than than most game comes games comes. No, I still expect the same as Gamescom of past years. We'll have a handful of new announcements. Some, you know, they'll be pretty good, but it's not going to be this super right, exciting so we event. It's awesome for the people attending because they get to demo all these games oh, and yeah. play them. But at home, it's just going to be, oh, great, another Death Stranding trailer. Is we there still gonna don't be know a, what the hell the game is. Is there going to be a memorable reveal here, though? Because we can't, we can't seem to remember anything from last year. <laughs> Maybe I'd say the Sega game is probably going to be the most memorable thing we see from Gamescom. Oh, wait, does Nate know what the Sega game is? No. I, have I, I do not know what the Sega game is. <laughs> okay, okay. I, I, the way you said that, it's like, I think that'll be... the Se- I mean, Sega is the one that's really... I mean, THQ and kind of, too. They both kind of are hyping up whatever they're going to show. Although, T- Sega did attach the AAA title to it, and that generally is uh, supposed to be a big deal. And now we have other stuff going. So do you want to talk about your, your theories for the Sega reveal there, Sean? So last week, I thought it could potentially be Knights because of the fact that Knights has recently gotten a patent. And at one point in time, the original Knights was a triple A game. It was a big deal when it came out. It was on the cover of magazine. You know what that that stuff. You know what that's for, right, Sean? What? It's for a cell phone game. Would they confirm that? No, I'm just telling you, I know what it's going to be. It's going to be a so because you're because, you know, everyone's like, oh, Knights. I was like thinking about it, too. I was like, oh, cool. And then I stopped for a second. I said. We're, we're all too excited about this. It's going to be a mobile game. I th- but I think <laughs> I think there was a second discovery after the initial patent was discovered that it was an actual console game, um, not a mobile game or a, a pachinko machine. Oh, okay, that's what a lot it. of people were saying. And I saw someone follow up with that. So I thought it was <laughs> nice. But then there's been this weird teaser on Sega's Twitter like the past two days of like a little pulse signal yes. and there's there's a bunch of different theories one theory is that it is for a new game called humankind um which is actually just something i heard about a few minutes yes. ago yep. um t- tied into a sega patent which you can very well it was trademarked and then if you go to the website apparently in the source code you can see humankind as well okay um, so it does appear to at least have that that could just be like a subtitle uh, or a something. subtitle a code name yeah any of that yep because I think it could also potentially be Trauma Center, but then it wouldn't be a triple A game. I do wonder if that if they could call that a triple A game. That's the thing, because Trauma Center, fantastic series. The games on the DS and the game on the Wii. I never played the one on the Wii, but I really like the ones on the DS. Paging Dr. Styles. The um, DS ones were really good. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, they had an interesting story and the gameplay was really fun. I don't think you could call that a triple A game, but I definitely sort of got that vibe. Some people think it could be Alien Isolation, too, because of the, the color scheme of it or something. Oh, yeah. There's, yeah, think about that. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that would make sense. That actually make a lot of sense. And they just recently. Didn't like Alien Isolation get announced for Switch or is it already out or no, it's coming That's, out? Yeah, like, it I think it's coming out in a few weeks because of the yeah. um, ESRB uh, rated it, which I'm actually interested to see how that version of the game runs, because that was a pretty damn good looking game on the Xbox well, one. It was on 360 and PS3, too. So That's see, the problem. Just, I love it? Trauma Center. Yeah. yeah, it was it was two discs on the 360. Really? Wow, I completely missed that. Yeah, it was two discs on there because I think it was like I think it was like eight or nine gigabytes that's why i was like I, they should be able to fit that on a cart then no problem yeah um, i mean but, they're putting witcher 3 on a cart true yeah but that's the project red who is more about making preservation of games as i mean they run gog true. so you see like uh, tra- i'll go back to the trauma center thing i love trauma center i've played them all i have them all trauma team bombed so bad that it scared them from it i don't think i don't think sega would be the one teasing it because it's an atlas ip 
and Atlas likes to handle their stuff on their own. Like you don't see Sega talking about Persona; it's Atlas. That's true. Yeah. I like I like that theory about Alien Isolation too. Actually, I like that. That that actually well, might be it. Well, well good... no, because um, our hops in the chat just said the developer of I- Alien Isolation confirmed on Reddit that they are not making Sega. Oh, game. man, I'm telling you, I think this whole thing with the like the, the the life indicator, I think that's just a red herring. Like they're showing that like a creature or something's alive right now. And plus there there aren't they doing was that? No, never mind. Never mind. I was wrong. I was telling you, I think it's something like that. I think they're just showing that like something's alive or, or so, and it could literally be anything be attached to anything. Well, I mean, I mean right. humankind, it can be a zombie. It can be a human. It could be. Well, is not the monkey game and called humankind something? Yes. Ancestors, the humankind odyssey. Yeah, that's Remember already the, been revealed though, right? What the hell is that? Yeah. That was the, that's the monkey game where you go through and play as a monkey going through um, evolution. Oh yeah, that weird ass game. The one the yeah. one thing though the one thing though they didn't say awesome. as far as I get they didn't say new IP right they just said triple A game. Yeah, they didn't say a new IP. Oh, see people got to start looking through that the the Sega uh, IP list see what they have. I mean because I mean. Well, I, I mean, think humankind. it would have said a new IP if it was a new IP. Yeah, they would have definitely said new IP, I think. I mean, humankind is the thing because the URL is HMKD. Right. So, I mean, humankind, yeah. HMKD, it's all basically the same thing. Now, Sega's handling of this, either it's going to live up to the hype and people are going to say, hell yeah, that was an you know, awesome new AAA game or awesome new IP that I'm looking forward to. Or it's going to be typical Sega fashion and they're going to come out and they're going to trip over their own legs and they come out and say, look, we just <laughs> announced a triple A version of Rystar. No, it's Sonic. It. It's Sonic Humankind with the with the Sonic from the movie. Oh, God, it's a sequel to Sonic 2006. He's got people <laughs> so, man in the chat. Some just... people were saying Shadow the Hedgehog, right? <laughs> oh, God. I'm looking through. I'm just looking through some of their IPs that they have and I'm like, I don't. I can't, I'm trying to think of what what any of these would be a triple A game outside of like a Yakuza, I guess. But we it's not virtual be that. fighter, virtual fighter six, humankind. The pulse is the pulse of virtual fighter coming back to the forefront of 3D fighting games. Look, if Tekken is a damn triple A <laughs> game, if Tekken is a triple A game, virtual fighter is a triple A game. It period, is, point blank. Is Tekken a triple A? <laughs> it's I mean, it gets big promotion, $60 price tags. People That's buy it. True. Ah, it's going to be interesting to see what I they mean, have, this is, though. This is something to look forward to for Gamescom, is to see what Sega brings to the table. Hopefully, yeah. it's exciting. I mean, it would have been awesome if it was Alien Isolation 2, because it seems like we've been waiting for them to make a sequel since the first one came out. It would suck for Switch that the first one's going to come out right around the time they announced <laughs> the sequel. But that seems to be like kind of the you know what happens with nintendo they're like hey we got this awesome game coming and then they, then all of a sudden the publisher like yeah we just put it on sale for a dollar on steam and we announced the sequel for every other platform but you like oh. it's a shame because like they like fantasy star obviously they're doing their uh online two coming over answer dragoon's already being done even that's probably not triple a yeah i don't know yeah, man i think panzer's gonna be a, a 40 dollar title yeah. yeah yeah jets i don't think they're gonna do, i don't think it's jets at radio Unless it's just that radio in space or something crazy. I don't know. Vector man, humankind. Dude, it's uh, that's going to be interesting. I, I am very curious as to what Sega is bringing to the table. So uh, anyone's guess, though, it seems. I mean, we thought, you know, our trauma center is going to throw it out there. Alien Isolation 2 is a great guess, but it's a, it's a shame it's not that. Um, well, I mean, Creative ooh. Assembly said, no, we're not the AAA game, but they're not going to go to Reddit and Twitter and say, yes, we are. Do they own? Do they own that? I saw a uh, uh, ninja in the chat said Alpha Protocol. I think there's something up with Alpha Protocol. Yeah, I don't know though. if they. I don't think they own that though anymore. I don't there's think some, they, something's going on with that. Yeah. And didn't it get like delisted on platforms and shit? Yeah. Which I'm sorry, Alpha Protocol. It was, maybe it wasn't too ambitious of a game, but I think the premise of it was very, very cool. That has a pretty big following, actually. Still, I'm surprised. Like, there's actually like a cult following for that game. I, re- I so. really hate that game. <laughs> <laughs> I was so hyped for Alpha Protocol because it came in the. It came like after Mass Effect, right? 
So yes. everyone was kind of trying to do like the Mass Effect style of game, it's like a right? Spy RPG or something. Yeah, yeah. spy RPG, and it's just it, it's it's like nowhere. Mass Effect had its issues, but it's nowhere near as good as Mass Effect, in my opinion. And it's just man, I was so disappointed with that game, and I spent sixty bucks on it too. And it pissed. Back then, I didn't have. I mean, I didn't have money at all, so I was really mad. I was really mad about that. <laughs> If Burning Sega, Rangers, humankind. That would if be Sega like, really wants to bring a game back that was awesome, that no one played, shit, what the hell is the name of this game? <laughs> it uh, was so great, I forgot it, the name. What? I can't, what the hell is the name of it? I what need to look it, it up now. What is it like? It's a third-person shooter where the people were robots, but they didn't know they were robots, and the guy started having, like, a meltdown. Oh, dude, people found... Um... What's the hell? Wait, people, oh no, I think people, I know what you're talking about. Not everyone's a robot. There are some people who are robots. Uh, yeah, and they didn't know when you went with like a squad. The final fight felt like something out of Zone of the Enders. I people people found coordinates that were in the trailer and they punched it in the, to Google, to like Google Earth, and it brought them to Ethiopia. Hmm. Humankind. Isn't that isn't Ethiopia where the cradle of uh, binary domain Frades is yes binary domain i actually loved the hell out of that game <laughs> that game was awesome giant monster fights yeah. interesting Maybe isn't it's... that the isn't that the sense uh, is that where it is let's say yeah uh, so let's uh let's move over to nintendo they're doing their indie world presentation in the morning on monday there's actually a lot of stuff happening on monday there's what nintendo inside xbox google stadia and then opening night so there's a lot of stuff. I mean, any one of those presentations could have brand new games in it. But Nintendo's Indie World, at this point, it seems like everyone figures Ori is getting revealed here. Um, yes. uh, Daniel Ahmad went on Twitter and said that there would be another Microsoft game that was going over. It's going to be revealed there. You think indie games, you try to figure out any game that I guess would be from Microsoft. And what's really left? Is Ori like the only thing that's really left? Well, I mean, he even put in his tweet, if you've been paying attention to rumors, yes. you know what it is. And the only one left in the rumors, I mean, Cuphead was part of the rumors. And then yes. it's just Ori in the Blind Forest is the only other Microsoft title that's been rumored to come to the Switch. Yeah, you're the one who told us about it. Yes. Yes, I did. Yes. Okay. So Ori is pretty much, I mean, that's pretty much locked in at this point for most people would assume at at, at that point. But with the, I wonder if they'd open with it because they opened with Cuphead. So maybe they would. Or and even then, be a good opening or closing. Mm, it can't yeah. just be like mixed into like the middle. It has to be right. You open the show or you close the show with it because that's going to be that hype moment. Well, I wonder if that. I I'm wondering if they would open with a, one of the shadow drops because Daniel Mott also said there'd be two shadow drops that would be according to him like hot and oh yeah, one of the things is super hot, super hot on the servers yeah. with a patch already. Yep. So. Super hot appears to be one of them, yeah. Uh, and that would actually be a cool one to lead off with. I don't think you'll see Labo VR because that would be terrifying, probably with it. But uh, it's still a really fun game if you've never played it. It's really cool. That's the one where, like, thing like everything moves when you move, kind of thing. I wonder if it's gonna have motion controls. I would assume it would, right? Oh uh, yeah, I would. Yeah, definitely, right? Yeah. That was one of the things about it. Um, so that seems to be one of them. It's it's good. It's really cool in VR because you can actually see the bullets and stuff around you. Like it has like mm -hmm. the bullet trails and everything. Um, but that that's a good one to check out. But the other one though, I don't some people have said Hotline Miami. It's possible. I mean it makes sense if we're gonna use hot yeah. as I was kinda hoping people, <sighs> I mean, people have been wanting Hotline Miami on the Switch now yeah. since basically the system launch. I was kinda hoping that Castle Crashers would be the other one. That yeah, would we be haven't cool heard have. about that since the ah. PAX announcement. There you go. See, see, they're just, they're just getting everyone ready, and then they're just gonna drop it. Castle Crashers is awesome. Everyone should play it. Great game. Did you, did you play that one, Sean? Nope. Oh, no, no, I actually had to look it up to see what that. You're gonna was. like that, dude. That is a fun game. Um, I think they have full online and everything for this. So, uh, yes, Castle Crashers is legit. It, it'll fit in perfectly with the Switch too. So it's also going to the PS4, I believe. But um, yeah. The Switch, I think, is where it'll sell really, really well. It should have single Joy-Con play, too, because it's not like a overly complicated game to play. It's like a beat-em-up style. It's like Scott Pilgrim vs. the World style. So okay. yeah, I'm yeah. looking at some screenshots. Yeah. So that would go away. I think it was I think when it came out, it was like 20 bucks, too, if I remember right. So it sh shouldn't be an expensive game. Um, and I mean, we also heard about a Hollow Knight Silk Song, but I think they're just taking their time. Team Cherry is. So is there any I mean, Untitled Goose Game, Nate? 
that we, we get any about that? The delay, I don't expect to see it in Man. this particular indie highlight. I think that would come maybe later in the year at another direct or maybe something early next year. I think the delay really kind you of. You know what? You got it, Nate. We got it. We got to close out the fall direct with that game. Yeah, that'd be the perfect time for that untitled yeah. goose. Yep. You can't rush greatness, man. But if you can close out the fall direct oh, with that. Oh, a lot of my users were saying they really think like they're, they said, man, like goose game at announced or shadow dropped or right. Because I think in that rumor, he said that there's going to be two games that are shadowed. So yes, two games are going to get shadow dropped. Apparently. So maybe goose, maybe goose game is that game. Right. No, I mean, I would love that. I still don't see. I mean, people talk about this goose game so much. I've watched the trailer a million times and tried to tell myself that I'm going to like it, and I, I, I don't know. I feel like with all the gameplay we've seen, I think they even showed off or maybe talked about them playing multiplayer gameplay themselves. It's got to be close. Tell them, Nate. Tell them. Untitled Goose Game. Untitled Goose Game is. It's going to be game of the year. <laughs> it's going to be game of the year, man. Let's get. It's going to be game of the year. No uh, one should doubt the goose. About 20 minutes, too, by the way. 20 minutes in this presentation. You think we're going to... Um, I saw someone in the chat mention it. You think we're going to see potentially another crossover Cadence of Hyrule style in this one? No. Mm, I, I would love to see... I'm trying to think, because the reason that came about is because they played Crypt of the Necrodancer like, at their studios and everything when they were making games. That was what they played in their lunch break, apparently, with Al Numa and uh miyamoto mm-hmm. i i never really hear them talk about anything else other than what they talked about red dead redemption 2 at one point uh witcher at one point they i, I don't know that'd be cool it'd be neat if they got another indie studio because they're like getting really comfortable with some of these indie de- uh, developers but um i think i feel like that was just a weird situation that just kind of came together good game though um Man, Shadow, Shadow Drop is going to be really interesting to see. I always like those. I, I prefer those if I if I can have it. Just like announce it and then put it right out. Same. Um, Twenty minutes though. Any is there any other? The problem with these indie ones is so hard to take a guess at what's really going to be there because there's so many indie games and sometimes they just come out of nowhere. But is there is there any indie game that anyone was really looking to see come over before we uh, before we moved on? Um, no, I want more information on that one. Uh, game with the musher, the, the musher. last ga- the musher where you got the oh dogs. yeah 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 oh, all right all right yeah. I'm like, what yeah I, I, I think sure. that game looks pretty dope that was like the survival style game yeah yeah yeah, yeah. You I like I like the, the beginning yeah that looked legit I wanted to see I I keep like hoping like that I don't remember the name of the week when new games come out I look I'm like oh it hasn't come out this week I probably should just take two seconds and learn the name of it. Uh, so it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. Gamescom, I think it's gonna be it's gonna be a, a fun week. I think overall. Um, so hopefully we get some cool stuff. And then uh, what what else, what always seems to happen in the fall, Nate, when we get an indie presentation? Like weeks later, I mean, there there always tends there tends to be a direct weeks later. So yeah, usually about two weeks after the Gamescom indie presentation, usually Nintendo follows up with a direct. Yep. So I mean, it happened last year. If you remember, last year we had. The Gamescom Direct that was put out, and then that was the one that got actually delayed as well. Yeah. Uh, if I remember right. So it's actually been a year. So it doesn't even feel like it's been that long since all of that happened. So, yeah. And that, um, that was a pretty big Direct in terms of announcements the last September. Yeah. A lot of stuff was in there. So, hey, I mean, you never know. We could have a Direct a couple weeks after that. So after um, after Gamescom. So they're all kind of following the same format. Um, let's, uh, let's go over discord question. Evan, what do you got for us? All right. Okay. So who else is super excited for a hat in time coming to the switch? I, I, I liked it on the PS4. Um, I played it there. You know what indie game I just thought of, uh, killer queen black. (laughs) Oh yeah. That game game seemed like it kind of disappeared in recent months. It seems like it's ready for a shadow drop. It got delayed, so and then they're they're also doing like an Xbox One version too, right? So Which, yeah, it's supposed to be like a physical copy, I thought as well. Yeah, so, physical copy. I don't yeah, know. I just thought of that for some it's, reason. It seems like that'd be a, from what I've read about that game because I haven't played it, but it seems like it'd be pretty a pretty dope multiplayer game to play like, with your friends. It seems like it seems it looks kind of lame, right? People but it seems love like it that might game be in the arcades, yeah. man. People yeah, big big about that game. So oh, okay, we'll see. That that would be a cool shadow drop, though. I think that'd be neat. 
So, um, uh, what was the Discord question, Evan? It was a hat in time. Who's who's excited? I'm guessing. Uh, I played it on the I played it on the PS4. Uh, I liked it there. Apparently, the co-op is going to show up for the Switch. I guess before the other versions, unless it drops same day on the other versions. But it's good if you like a 3D platformer type game like a ukulele or banjo kazooie kind of i guess is where i'd put it in uh but i liked it i thought it was fun uh it's not like a super long game either so i like that they're doing a physical a physical version yes i'll buy the physical copy i'll probably i'll probably pick that up that comes with the dlc also oh nice physical copy does yep i think that's how they're kind of justifying the so i think it's like 40 dollars physical um but it'll come with i i believe a little slip of paper or something that says hey here's your download code for the dlc or something yeah, that's legit um, yeah yeah so I'll, I'll get it physically there as well um on the switch i'm looking forward to it though i don't know if uh oj I, th- I think you said at one point you didn't play a lot of 3d platformer style games like this um yeah i've and, never been a huge fan of the 3d platformers outside i play the main market but I was never like I would never cut on like Banjo Kazooie. Stupid alarm! I never cut on like Banjo Kazooie or anything like that. Like as much as other people. So, so yeah. I mean, but I mean, I don't know if I'll get it, but maybe, maybe that they might send it to me. I, I got entered the dungeon out of nowhere. No, oh, so. there you go. All right, <laughs> that was a pretty cool physical edition. It had all the. De- it's like hey, kind of like the same thing. Hey, hey, they were excited to bring it over to the Switch, man. There's no, there's no back and forth on that one. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, what, what did they say earlier this year? People are like, hey, is Hat in Time coming to Switch? There's no chance it ever off. happens. <laughs> go to hell. Like, yeah, I can't I, wait to buy your game. I, I'm just saying. The thing is, like, I, I agree with most of the people that are mad about. But I just think that some people were being a little bit too aggressive with them too. Like I, I got, they shouldn't have responded the way that they responded. But some people were being really aggressive with them about not. You want to, you want to buy a, you want to play a good platformer on Switch later this year. People should buy Ori and the Blind Forest. But that's two D. We're talking. 3D. I don't give a damn. It's better than a hat in time. <laughs> well, really, is, I, Ori's really good. I've played banjo, but some people are saying I've, I've played banjo before. I just don't. I don't. I just don't like it as much as everybody else. You don't. You don't seek them out. Like you don't seek nah. out the three. Okay, there you go. But, but I like Super Mario Odyssey is freaking amazing though. That game's awesome. Uh, yeah, that's uh, you. You should play. Did you play Ori yet, Sean? Nope. I, oh, that's that's good. I, I'm I'm curious what your reaction is going to be for that game when it comes out because that like playing that game for the first time was really really good. Like you want to get some nice headphones and just kind of hang out with it because it has okay. some awesome music. I have very good headphones because I use a headset when playing uh Friday the 13th and handheld. <laughs> you, you could also I mean put it on your TV and blast music as well. It has some good it has a good soundtrack and everything too. And it has it has uh music that really sets the mood in the game. So nice. You definitely want to do want to check that one out. Um Yes, uh, looking forward to Hat in Time though, Evan. Definitely, definitely. Uh, let's uh, let's let's jump over to oh the MPDs. We had the MPDs for July. Yeah. Switch was number one. Pro Controller was number one accessory. Uh, Thanks to the Spawncast viewers. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, yeah, you buying one? Set it over the edge. Wait a minute. Where's that review, Sean? I people have been bitching at me all night about it. Like, sorry, it's coming. People don't forget. I know it's literally tomorrow or, or or Monday. I'm kind of going back and forth because I have another switch accessory that I kind of want to do both of them together in the same video because I think they're two kind of essential things to for most people. But I'm kind of going back and forth on it, so I'm not sure. But it'll it'll be Monday, the absolute latest. Okay. 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 Uh, but we went through software MPDs. Uh, here's the thing. I, that's this is still crazy. To me Madden NFL 20 was number one. Uh, doesn't count PC sales. We don't we all complain. We all complain about Madden, right? Yes. Like, I mean, doesn't everyone complain I mean, about I feel that like game? I've is, it, is it just the mostly because I don't is it care. just the I, is it just like the NFL like is coming back? The football fever gets people right away, and yes. like, they want to. Yeah. I mean, that's, okay. what, that's what Madden is. Madden buyers are casual gamers and they buy Madden every single year. They don't care about what EA does in it. No, it's a nickel and dime you. They're not hardcore gamers who sit there and worry about that stuff. They go out, they buy Madden, they go home, they have fun, and that's it. But the but the thing about it is that Madden sales literally fall off of a cliff. They make everything they're gonna make in like that first month, and then nobody yeah. else buys it's it. Like it's once way football, lower. Once football really starts. People just watch football instead of like play yeah. Madden. Then. And the thing about it is that it's like after people buy like the it's not even like it used to sell like it like it did before, right? Madden used to sell way more. 
Mm. Like FIFA, you know, FIFA crushes it. But Madden used to sell a lot more. It doesn't even sell. Basically, it just sells to the people that just rush out there and buy it. And then Black Friday, people, if you, if people don't buy it in that first month that it comes out or whatever, they just wait for Black Friday because it'll be thirty dollars. And then after Black Friday, it nobody ever even it's it, it sells at two points the first month and then Black Friday and then that's it because it'll it's always going to be thirty dollars on Black Friday, like around yeah, that. Man, that's yeah, that's. Still number. I mean, it'll probably drop off like you're saying, like it'll probably by like October, it'll be way down the charts uh, at that point. Um, Fire Emblem was number two. That does not count digital sales, by the way. None of the Nintendo games count digital sales, only physical sales because eShop Nintendo still doesn't share their eShop data um, with the NPD group. Uh, three was Mario Maker two. Marvel to Alliance three was four. That's like, that's pretty good. Minecraft was five. Grand Theft Auto five was six because it's like it's never going away. Smash Bros. Ultimate was seven. Mortal Kombat 11 at eight. Mario Kart 8, nine. And then Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild at 10. That means that Nintendo had six of the top 10 spots with just their physical copies alone. And it also means that Fire Emblem did pretty well in its first week and a half. Ten days. Ten days because it went to August 5th. I think it was just five days right. for the reporting period. Okay, because I their reporting period, I think, because the reason Madden is included in this, because it's always an August thing, is because the overlap went to August 4th. You guys want to know how much Fire Emblem sold in the first however many days? How much did Fire Emblem sell? So the rumor, but from this person, it's the same guy that we talked about before, Daniel, over 300,000 units in that first tracking period, not digital. On the, uh, oh, on the MPDs. Yeah. The number he put out, it's a little... People are kind of misunderstanding. He put greater than 300,000 because he is including somewhat digital sales. The sales physically were less than 300,000. He's saying over 300,000 because he is saying with digital sales, it's definitely over that figure. But that's that's just in um that's just in the West though, like in the US, right? US. Yeah. yeah. See, this is interesting because it almost feels like with how Fire Emblem is doing in Japan, it almost feels like it's becoming a like a like a Western franchise. Like, is it, is it more popular in the U S than Japan now? Japan sales are difficult to track because it was part of the voucher program and a single voucher. If you bought the two vouchers in Japan, it, you know, still a hundred dollars, but fire emblem in Japan was like $70. So you actually got a hell of a deal if you just bought the voucher. Mm. So the digital ratio in Japan could be fairly significant. So you can't really just look at the 200,000, physical sales of Japan and try to figure out how sales are trending based on that alone, because the digital could be, you know, could be 40, 50%. It's tough to really gauge how the voucher program impacted the sales of Fire Emblem. Okay. It was a better deal to go with the voucher program in Japan for Fire Emblem than it was to buy it physically. It also did pretty well in the UK, like the UK sales charts. So like Fire Emblem did pretty well i mean it, it did fine in japan but uh and it is more expensive than like the 3ds games like i think if you want to go by revenue it's probably up there pretty well oh, yeah. um but uh hey i mean that's good for fire that's great for fire emblem it, what's gonna be really interesting is what nintendo reports with it because in order to make that chart it probably has to sell three million copies before their next report yeah it would have yeah it would have to top about three million almost about i think they had like 270 2.75 was the lowest that yeah they had number 10, and probably so. by the time we come back around it'll probably be like yeah. 2.8 or 2.9 well, or something like that we'll get numbers in the actual report itself as long as it shipped a million copies in that quarter because they always do the million for the quarter right. report. so yes. we may not see it on the top of the best selling switch titles on their website but we will get shipment figures in the next quarterly report. No I was almost wondering if they would have announced it too, like sold a million copies or something. Cause that's like for those kind of games, that's generally a pretty big deal. Like remember Octopath got that treatment by square. Like if it's like an, I don't want to say niche, but like an RPG strategy. Style. I mean, that's not like a big genre that like, you know, you see all these charts all the time and the NPDs. Nintendo's weird. Sometimes they'll announce stuff. Sometimes, sometimes they won't like, like they'll just say it like, like Mario Kart eight deluxe, even though that game, it like started out, like they didn't say anything. They said it when it came out on the Wii U, but then they didn't say it when it came out on the switch, you know, they didn't, yeah. like, they just, it was on the report, but they didn't mention like, Hey, we sold 3 million. But when it came out on the Wii U, they're like, we sold 1 million in three days or 1.2 million in three days. So it's just kind of interesting to see when they actually say they announce something and when they don't, you know? I think the Fire Emblem situation is just, it's complicated for them, especially in the West, because we have, 
like to say, oh, based on revenue, it sold this. But the NPD for Fire Emblem Fates, it counted the three SKUs differently. It counted them separately. But if you combine them, it totally alters what we're viewing, mm. the sales of the games, because people are using that. And when you compare it to uh, like Awakening and Valencia and Fates, the way they counted the different SKUs, the pricing, it's also it's like a hodgepodge of a disaster of actually trying to figure out some of these things. So they're probably just better off not saying really anything. That way, no one's going to break down the sales. But I mean, with Awakening, they came out and they boasted the sales because it was Fire Emblem's resurrection. This was right, a franchise that, that if it couldn't sell three hundred thousand units, the franchise was dead. It comes out and it sells a couple million. So that was something to boast. This one, it's probably uh, let's let's actually see how long these sales continue. Mm-hmm. Let's see, is it going to do the typical RPG route where we're going to lose eighty percent of the sales the following month, or are we going to see some longevity with the game? Still, uh, it's still pretty good for Fire Emblem to see, to see that though. So it's uh, good news for Fire Emblem. Um, Madden will will probably always win every month it comes out unless something crazy comes out alongside of it. But uh, so Grand far, Theft Auto or something. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah, dude. Yeah. The, I I want to see the chart today. Grant, I thought it was six drops. That is gonna be crazy. Everyone's um, gonna buy it, dude. Hey, everyone's nuts. buying that thing. That's gonna be insane. GTA Five will still be on that chart though. It'll just stay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, GTA Four was on the chart for a long. Wasn't it on the chart like when GTA Five was first? Mm, the sales still chart wasn't it. Yeah. That's a shame. No one should have played GTA. 4. I just know everybody buys GTA Five just for the online. Like they, most people buy it now, probably don't even touch like the the single player anymore. They're just probably rebuying it for yeah, some and reason. And then they hack it, they get banned, and then they buy it again because it's usually on <laughs> sale for like ten bucks. It tends to be. Oh buying. man. Uh, let me go through a few more of these super chats. Uh, I actually I want to talk a little bit about Bioware too because some some happenings are going on right now, and it doesn't look great i guess it's it's very weird because nate you talked about bioware a while ago saying that it wasn't the same bioware and it looks like they're having even more turnover now they're having some problems it's definitely not the same bioware anymore yeah this is it's not looking great um let me go to zildjian saying uh cyberpunk gameplay demo was released at gamescom last year the big hour-long gameplay demo that along makes it better than e3 oh that was something else uh thanks for bringing that up zildjian uh this year they're gonna do the same thing it sounds like they're gonna have a larger demo that they're gonna show the press and then they're gonna release it when gamescom is over so if you're looking for some cyberpunk news and information it sounds like there's gonna be a, a lengthy like uh, uh gameplay video that they're gonna be putting out um Van- vanessa era says capcom needs to relaunch remaster gotcha force mm. i don't remember I, gotcha <laughs> force at this point is like how ex- that game's expensive man isn't it? i think it's like over 200 bucks oh man do you have that in your collection sean hell no oh uh, well maybe you should watch my gamecube video for rare games then it's, well, coming, up. it's coming up yeah i mean i already know gotcha force is rare oh <laughs> I'll still watch it, but <laughs> you should watch my video. Why? I know they're rare. Who gives a shit? <laughs> uh, Aiden Quinn says, "Wait, this isn't Alcoholics Anonymous." That was funny. Philip uh, Patterson, no message. Thanks, Philip. Uh, Toshi says, "Any news on a Switch Pro controller video, Sean?" Yes, tomorrow <laughs> or Monday. Just admit you would like the dog controller more. I mean, we're going to do comparisons. Oh, man, that's going to be a fun I, like to dislike ratio when he says that. <laughs> I, use the dog, I use the dog controller myself, man. I used it for Fire Emblem, and I'm, I might do a video. I'm presently surprised. That was my first time using it. Yeah, see, the launch. dog controller is coming through. It works yeah. for that, but Smash... <laughs> now, i'm telling I you uh, i i you got the pro controller shot and now there's a new pro controller yeah i've i've seen everyone goo goo and gogging i just saw uh, uh bob put up a video and i was like well shit i just got a pro controller the sn30 the pro plus dude thing is is nice it is a nice controller it doesn't turn the switch on though eight but though you got to figure that out you got to figure that out most people didn't even figure out their pro controller can turn the switch on for a while. <laughs> 
I know I did it. I was like, oh, snap, this thing can actually turn it on. <laughs> I got to figure that out because some a uh, couple of them are doing that now. I know the uh, GameCube controller from Powery, I think, could do it. So got to figure that out. Uh, David Valdez says, just supporting the spawn cast. Anyone getting Gears 5? I rarely play my Xbox anymore. I saw the special edition Gears 5 Xbox One X. Looks great. It does. That's the one that has like the the like the like ice look and it has like the, the symbol on the side that looks like it's under under ice. Oh, it looks awesome. Uh, the control looks good too. I have the Halo 5 special edition Xbox One and it's awesome. Uh, Gears 5 is going to be on Game Pass. I'm not getting the special edition. I'll probably just download it when it comes out on Game Pass. I know. Are you just doing that as well, Nate? Uh, no, I'll buy it. You're buy it. Yeah, I know you're like Gears. Gears I'll, I'll download it early because you get it. What is it? Four days early on Game Pass or whatever. It's so like, I'll do it for the, those is it days. The Ultimate Edition or something? Like you got to get or no? I think the Game Pass version gives you like the ult- access of the Ultimate Edition. Oh, so you get it that week early. And then once it actually comes out, I'll buy it. Hey, when Halo Infinite's coming out, you guys better be on it. We're going to be rolling through online uh are you are you getting gears 5 sean i will download it that's like the first week of september so yeah uh i don't know oj you're gonna check that one out too uh (laughs) probably not i'll be now astral chain will be around for you right (laughs) oh yeah astral chain yeah astral chain i'm gonna be doing that i'm still gonna be probably doing more stuff with fire i I, I gotta play through all the past and all that stuff so i heard i heard astral chain's about 25 hours is what they were saying yeah yeah and that's get through that before gears maybe but also gear gears comes out uh september right september what it's like september 5th right it's like a week it's like it's like a week after or something right yeah i might still be doing astral chain stuff because you know like they, uh, it's a good, it's about like 25 hours but you know good and well september, like september 10th i'm sorry but then how west. how early is it nate you said a few days early on on ultimate edition so i guess yeah. it, september 10th is is technically the release date but then it's not actually <laughs> okay okay yeah. yeah but just like the, the side quest and like the harder mm-hmm. was like i spent i spent 55 hours in bayonetta 2 on the on on the wii u 50 something and that's not a that game's like 12 hours or something like that, right? What the fuck so, were you doing? Uh, the multiplayer, <laughs> oh, okay, uh, okay. the the um, getting all like pure platinums, all that okay. stuff. Like, I'm not naturally like amazing at the game. I have to work like I'm not like a super talented, so I have to work really hard to get the pure platinums in the game, doing all that type of stuff. So yeah, like Bayonetta one on the Xbox 360, I spent like 60, 70 hours in that one too, just getting everything, getting everything possible, just replaying stuff for fun. I have like a challenge mode and things like that. So I'll pr- I'm pretty sure Astral Chain is probably gonna have something like that as well. You know, some type of challenge mode, like where you can go in and like you know fight bo- like boss rush mode or stuff like that. So, uh, let me go. Uh, let me let me jump over to Streamlabs here. Um, we have uh, uh, Woods donating, saying, uh, "Do you think people will be smashing their PS4s if Genshin said they were inspired by Ghibli Studio?" That was the game where people were smashing their PS4. Yeah. One uh, crazy guy was smashing his PS4. I was going to say, I, th- I think it's just like one person <laughs> smashing their one PS4. Uh, I I know Wood, Wood did a video on that actually today. Yeah. Talking yes. about that it. whole I mean, thing became way bigger of a deal than it had to be. Who cares what one person does? Yeah. Like well, if, I think if RG, I'll... if Sean's video is him taking the pro controller and throwing it against the ground, is it going to be angry switch fan destroys switch pro controller because it doesn't look like a dog? No. <laughs> yes. It's, that's exactly what's going to happen. Well, if Sean did it, it'd get picked up because Sean has a bigger channel. Crazy YouTuber or angry oh, YouTuber rages. Then it's all of our fault. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like rages, like pro like yeah, it would be a big deal. Yeah, it depends on who it is. But since it's a uh, it's Legend of Zelda, somebody did something stupid based on Legend of Zelda or uh, 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 what's it called a, a clone or whatever. Yeah, it becomes a. It shouldn't be a big deal, but it becomes a big deal. You know. Mm. I mean, and I don't think anyone would really care about the art style influence. I mean. We have uh, Nino Kuni is uses that exact art style because Studio Ghibli did assist in the visual in the development of the game. We've seen a lot of games go with that type of art style. Oh it's man, I forgot that's coming out in September too. Man, that yeah, Breath of the Wild Wait, is September is September is an ass month for your wallet. Like I've been looking because I've been re- researching because we're so starting weird expression to use. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 you just you yeah. just you just grabbed the random word, didn't you? Yeah, it did. Ass um, 
yeah um <laughs> but yeah like it's crazy how much like i'm researching the games to talk about and it's like there's so many games like it's ridiculous yeah. there's a yeah, lot how many people how many people remember the first what's the opening switch title for september spyro damon okay. exclusive damon x machina yeah how many is that game have any chance Yo, look no. at Evan. Evan's like, yeah, I'm on that game. I'm, I'm playing it with like maybe See? the 12 other people who might pick it up who remember yeah, it. I, I'm, on I'm on it too. It's just a Marvelous doesn't want me to talk. Uh, yeah, yeah that that was, there's not a lot to talk about it, man. <laughs> they, don't, they don't want people to talk about the game. So, I mean, it's... Okay, so uh, Nate reminded me what it was. Uh, do you want to fill him in, Nate, on what, what the issue was with that? Oh, like, what, what, are they, what are they claiming? Because you, you you mentioned it to me, and I was like, oh, okay, I'll remember that. What was it? When I did, when I, when I put up the demo footage, I know other people's videos didn't get claimed, but I left in the story and, like, the cinematics, and they claimed my video. Yep. And I was like, whatever. So it's the cinematics that they claim, just so we no, know. In the, yeah. in the trailers. I know when. First, no. Yeah, in the trailers. Anything they officially release, you cannot. No, destroy. they're starting to claim. They're starting to claim, claim normal gameplay. They claimed before they weren't. They were doing what you guys are saying, but now they're claiming Treehouse gameplay. Straight up mm. Treehouse, which Nintendo, even back when Nintendo was lame about things, they would. Nintendo never usually claimed Treehouse gameplay. They let you use that. But they're even claiming Treehouse gameplay. Now, on top of that, they're claiming like Nintendo reactions. They claim my freaking Nintendo Direct reaction from E3. You know what I'm saying? Like they are going nuts and I don't know why they are like this is this is ridiculous. It seems weird. You think they try to get out any publicity they can like, yeah, please talk about our game. Please, please talk about our game. And we're so, sure it's not yeah. just like a PR company gone rogue that like they didn't know they had and aren't paying attention to. Like, well, they I saw it. Marvelous responded to OJ. What, yeah. On Twitter. What do they say? Yeah, about but it? Is they that PR did. company running their Twitter account? No, they said that Nintendo. They, Nintendo. They said that Marvelous Japan is the one that's setting these rules and restrictions, and that they have no. That Marvelous Twitter account has no affiliation with Nintendo of America on this game or Marvelous Japan on this game. So this, it's not them. But then they also proceeded to defend them over and over and over, like throughout a series of tweets, saying trying to make it seem as if Japanese companies can impose Japanese law on fair use in America. They literally tried to say that. And I said, that's false. You can, <laughs> Japanese restrictions on fair use. They said, oh, well, it's different in Japan. We're not, we're, we're, not, the, we're not in Japan. <laughs> like, <laughs> what the fuck? Why did you it even sounds, bring that up? It like, sounds <laughs> like they're going to go that weird Atlas route where they're just going to claim everything and say, this is ours. You can't have it. You're not profiting from it. And then maybe, maybe they'll come to Twitter. They'll make an announcement saying the first six months you cannot show this content, and then after that we'll allow it. Because Atlas loves to do that stuff with their games. It's a great strategy for an unknown. <laughs> you know what? And that's and that's one thing. But to sit there and try to say it's not like well we have different restrictions. This is not fair use when it is. It's transformative smaller clips it's literally the definition of fair use it's not like i just have their gameplay and everything's theirs and everything like that but they're trying to sit there and say that a video that's shot in america that's has americans playing the game that's working with nintendo of america and they say whoa japanese restrictions that was the thing that kind of was like okay that's not the case that's not true so i don't i mean marvelous europe was doing that he said we're not affiliation with that but let us defend them they said well if you want to talk to them about it Go to this page. I said, you know what? That's cool. I just won't. I just won't cover the game anymore. I just. I just won't cover it like that. Just, it's all good. Like, I'm still gonna play the game. And if you know, if they don't claim stuff when I launch, like when it launches, I'll still make videos and all that. But if you don't want people talking about your game before launch, or you want to just sit there and, and claim everything, that's fine. Then, then nobody. That's fine. Nobody. Uh, about it. Moon Moon Man says, uh, can Evan stream gameplay on this Mixer channel during the week? Yeah, Evan, you piece of shit. I don't really do gameplay recently. I might do it later. <laughs> I mean, we got that Mixer account. Uh, Mixer account. Why you can, are you, you can... streaming Friday the 13th? Oh, Ooh, that's, that's a fun of a game. I, if well, I do, hey, I do whoa, it on the whoa, PC. Whoa. Hey, Damon, Damon X Machina, man. There you go. You probably Stream do Damon X Mixer. Machina and we'll find out. You'll have to do it on Mixer. Yeah, because we don't care if it gets claimed. Yeah. <laughs> why why are you streaming Pantsu Journey? That's all you, man. I don't want to step in your pool. And Senran Kagura Peach Ball. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, I'm just touching those games, dude. 
Je Jeffrey Burns says, uh, got here late playing Fire Emblem. OJ talked me into playing it for the first time, and I love it. Did my first playthrough on Normal Classic. I'm now on my second playthrough on Hard Classic. I'm on Blue Li Lions. My uh, first playthrough was Golden Deer. Golden nice. Deer. Deer. That's my team. Great, great nice. game. I've heard that message so much from people saying, hey, man, you got me to get this game, and it was a good idea. I absolutely love it. And like I said, it's the same Fire Emblem that we all know and love, but just hd and better graphics and new stuff new obviously new story and all that but this is it's all good fire Emblem's always been this good it's always been this good uh sack on 10 says king of cards dlc or cyber shadow i forgot about cyber shadow that game actually looked that if i remember looked pretty good cyber shadow yeah it's the uh Yacht Club Games is developing oh, like the Ninja Gaiden style yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That packs. So I that's a good about that game. That'd be, that'd be really cool. Really good at packs. Uh, Div, Div Z says uh, Valkyria Chronicles for the Sega IP. No, not after that's, the last one. <laughs> that's not a trip. That's not a triple A. Valkyria Chronicles is triple A. I'm trying style. to figure out figure out what what Sega's tr definition of triple is that like 10 million you think in budget for tr Sega Shining Force Four, damn it! I don't, I don't, yeah, I just don't think maybe no. maybe maybe Valkyrie Triple A mm. one to them, but I don't, I don't think so. It's a great yeah. Valkyrie Chronicles Four is awesome by the way. If you haven't played it, go pick. It's like on everything, so go pick up that game. It's awesome. Uh, Dragon Zora says thank you guys for making the third a better shift. All right, cool, cool. Aaron says uh, UGG Game of the Year over Astral Chain and Link's Awakening. Untitled Goose Game. Yeah. Untitled yeah. Goose Game is going to be the greatest game of all time. Is it uh, going to beat Friday the 13th, though? That that's It's going to come down to those two for the Game of the Year. I mean, I'm, I'm putting it in my 2019 Switch Games of the Year, and anyone who doesn't like it can kiss my ass because I have had more fun playing this game than I probably should be having. <laughs> it's, it's about fun, but I think I think definitely the graphics. Are the best thing. Mm, I, but think. look at the look. Okay, now compare that to the graphics from what we've seen from Dead by Daylight. Let's be honest here. Ooh, that, Dead by that, Daylight is pretty sketchy. I mean. That Switch footage does not look all that great, and a lot I'm, of people. Did you say Switch or PS2 footage? Oh, oh Jesus Lord! It looks pretty bad, dude. If you look at that, you go, "Ooh." I, I, I'm just messing with you, man. I I, I know oh, the I, game is. I'm just messing. I, I, who cares about the graphics? You're having. That's what it's all about: is having fun with the game. So. Well, Dead by Daylight looks like it's having frame rate issues too. Yeah, <laughs> Dead by Daylight. Daylight looks like it's dead. Like yeah. that didn't. And a lot of people like Dead by Daylight more than Friday, but I've uh, watched comparison videos on the two, and I like Friday the Thirteenth more. I do think the Michael Myers map on Dead by Daylight looks absolutely fantastic, though. So I mean, I'm going to pick it up and play it on the Switch because tax right off and i can make a video on it and be interesting to watch but i don't i don't think i'm gonna enjoy it as much as friday because it's a smaller game you only have five people one killer and four friends or four people and only two ways to escape i like multiple ways uh, all i'm saying is people have to wait for untitled goose game where you go around and you're gonna murder that farmer with like a rake yeah that's gonna be good a nx revolution says you guys think we see a golf story sequel Probably not because I really want one. Uh, but what they should do is focus on another sport like tennis or something and do like a like a tennis story or something. I would be completely down for that. Uh, that would be really neat. I think the only, it was only like one person that made it or something like that. One two, or two, yeah. per, two people. Yeah, only, so. So we probably have to wait a little while yeah. for them to make a new game or a sequel since, you know, they probably took a little vacation after Golf Story came out. In, in the meantime, you can get Golf Story at Best Buy physical. Yeah. So. Yep. Yep. It's pretty cool to see that. Uh, Shadow of Nexus is Aliens Colonial Marines 2. I mean, yes, the first <laughs> game was bad, but <laughs> the I mean, first game was the first game was. Oh, man, that was worse than bad but, for what but, it came out. But wasn't it like most of the main glitches for the aliens was because of one letter in the source code of the game? The problem, yeah, <laughs> which if they didn't siphon money from development, maybe they would have noticed. <laughs> the, the problem was they showed everyone one thing and then gave them another. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that, that's true too. The old no, bait and switch. I, mean, I would I not use that, that title ever again. <laughs> Maybe a spiritual successor. Okay, there we go. We can do that. Uh, Richard Shadow, <laughs> no message. Thanks, Richard. Uh, uh, Toshi says uh, uh, Monday at the latest. Noted. It's for you, Sean. I know. <laughs> They're keeping tabs on me. I got y'all. Don't worry. Uh, uh, Black Vixen says anyone picking up Greedfall. 
I was thinking about it, but I'm just going to need more gameplay. What is, game what is Greedfall, Evan? It's like an RPG set, I want to say, in the Victorian era. You go to an island Ooh, where like there's these beings yeah. from fantasy are living alongside regular, like, everyday people, and there's problems. So That looks like that looks like a game. Yeah, actually, that looks like a game I could see you checking out. It I'm looks interesting, but some bits and pieces of it make it seem less worthwhile. I, I want to see a little bit more gameplay. I like that. The art style looks kind of cool. It's not yeah. quite realistic, you know? It's, um... Huh that's actually pretty neat. like it has a feeling of risen to me and i did like the first risen but we'll see that's out september 10th they still don't even have system requirements on the steam page that's weird huh. okay cool uh do you want to all right nate so bioware is in trouble i think what's good your bio... did you did ever did everyone see this on twitter i did yeah this is pretty bad right two people dragon age and also yes. uh, anthem lead produce the producer anthem lead producer right at bioware leaves after eight years he's out he's gone people on the reddit seem kind of happy about this by the way uh i don't know if they think it's going to be better now because he's not on the project or something that that's the he, team that's maintaining it or the one that created it uh i think both like because they're still working on their expansion right and they put that out i mean his his bio still said producer of anthem or producer at anthem or something yeah but if you i know i was talking to a friend who played it and was watching all this happen and there is like a whole team that made it that was supposed to be working on something else now and then they handed mm -hmm. it off to like a side studio because he was still apparently still showing up in the live streams fairly recently he might be from the side studio it. then i want um and then uh the, the person who was working on dragon age the new well it's not titled dragon we, we know it's titled dragon age uh is also leaving now and they said well i'll be i'll be excited to uh to play it as a fan at this point when it comes out they seem to, they seem pretty uh happy about what they were creating over there for the new dragon age but man bioware is something's going on there i mean anthem didn't do well i don't think i mean it sold it seemed to sell well but like does anyone talk about anthem anymore they didn't they didn't hit their sales goals did they based off of what EA? the ea didn't want to talk about it that's yeah sure. they didn't, i don't think that if they hit their sales goals they would have said something they didn't want to talk about it at all it seemed but i think it was more they were upset with the amount of people that were dropping off of it after initial sales. Like you can sell a copy to somebody, but you know how they're working. They're like, we want you to come back and play this every single day and nothing else. And when like half the people drop it after the first month, which is a lot of reports were coming out that like, you know, 70% of the user base is gone. That kind of kills the idea of a live service. I would say. Well, yeah. I mean, the thing of it is, is a vast majority of the, uh, we need to be honest here. A vast majority of these games as a service do not end up working out. For every Fortnite, for every, you know, game of that caliber, there's literally dozens and dozens of games. And now you're starting to see them from AAA companies, too. It's like, I think at some point you have to realize that if it's not a free to play thing where you're just micro transactioning the hell out of some things you know such as skins or you know clothes or items or stuff like that it's not it's not the big market that everyone thought it was yeah the real problem is we're going we just talked about we're going to september and how many games are coming out in september and you're still expecting if you're ea or ubisoft or anyone else you're still expecting those people to i guess ignore those games and not go on like uh you know just start going crazy over like an astral chain or a borderlands 3 or something else and maybe you put down the division 2 or maybe you put down anthem for a week or two i mean that to expect people not to do that is a little crazy to me when it comes to I that mean, i mean i'm just when i'm talking about how many games are coming out I, I was just speaking strictly for the switch and I mean, that's not even counting what's going on in the PS4 and the Xbox One. Like you got a lot of heavy hitters coming out in the second half of the year. I don't think people are going to be like, oh, here's Link's Awakening and here's a new Call of Duty. You know what? I really want to play Anthem again, though. Like, yes, I'm sure some people got their, you know, Anthem got their claws sunk into them, kind of like me and Friday the 13th. I probably <laughs> won't put down Friday the 13th no, for no. quite a while. But I mean, at the end of the day, like that's at least a game you could play a round or two you know and you know it won't take you all that long but like a game with anthem you kind of got to invest a lot of time in it if you want to make any sense it's 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 one of those looting games it just takes forever and on top of that you look at anthem and it's like it's all about the new stuff that they do you know friday the 13th it's complete right like you just everything that's going to be in there for the most part is going to be in yes you just, play the, you just play the game anthem isn't like the anthem's trying to get you to come back every day log in businesses 
all this type of garbage. And that's why I'm, I'm not a fan of what they're trying to do. Like, I think EA, when they were their most successful with Bioware, that they, they made complete experiences. And I hope that they go back to that. But everything EA has done has been some type of hybrid live service or something, you know, something along the lines of that, you know, their recent stuff. I'm just, but I don't know. I, I, it's, it's EA. So what, what's going to happen to Bioware? Does anybody think that Bioware is actually even going to be around much longer we don't like, really think bioware's themselves anymore like you've said nate they're like a shell of their old selves yeah so. they're they're basically what rare was when microsoft bought them from nintendo the talent had left it was a name and when all you have is a name you end up with empty games you end up with anthems because the talent that made the studio great had already departed but people they hope that you don't really pay attention to that you just see the name Oh, Bioware from the makers of Mass Effect. So you're going to say, oh, I'm going to buy Anthem. And then you buy it and you play and you say, oh, this game isn't that good. Mm. It's kind of like we're even seeing it a little bit with Retro, where a lot of the team that made Metroid Prime is no longer there. And I know the website had a story up this week. I think it was VGC. They had a list of a lot of the developers who are still at Retro, who have been there over the years, even though they accidentally listed one of the developers who died soon after Metro Prime 3 is still being at the studio. He's there in spirit. Yes, yes, he is. <laughs> and it's just like Retro isn't the company that we knew of from 2001. They're not even the same company from Metro Prime 3 days. They're still Retro, but you have to wonder, do they still have the talent? Do they still have that personnel to come out with that type of quality game? And when we look at Bioware, the talent seems to just have they've departed. Well, it's partially talent, partially synergy. So yeah, when those two things are out of whack, companies just collapse. I, and I think like, EA is definitely more. fed into a negative synergy within Bioware, but it seemed like this has just been kind of an ongoing affair at Bioware for it seems for years now. We kind of saw it with even with the Mass Effect franchise, you were noticing that these games we're losing what made Bioware great with their older things like Knights of the Old Republic, Jade Empire. The later Bioware games don't have that personality to them anymore. It's just, they feel lifeless. Yeah. It's, it's, it's sad to see the, the Bioware fall. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens with Dragon Age. Maybe they can turn it around there. Um, Evan, do you uh, do you have Discord questions? Yeah, we I mean, we the, have uh, uh, one left. The last question: okay. How well do you think Dragon Quest S will play on the Switch hardware? Eleven S. I think it'll be fine. I think it'll play the standard thirty frames and everything. I, image quality might be a bit different. I would assume take a bit of a hit, but uh, I think it'll work. Honestly, when I played it, you didn't really need it to have like a super high frame rate anyway, because it's like a it's a heavy, heavy Japanese RPG. Like it's not. Uh, they don't try anything too crazy in it. It's very traditional. Um, I think it'll run fine, though. I'm thinking 30 frames, 720, 1080. Um, and if it runs bad in 3D, just put it into the 16-bit mode, and it should run fine. <laughs> that's how I'm, I'm sure gonna, that's what everyone wants to buy it for. That's how I'm going to play through most of it, to be honest, is in that. Uh, um, 16, 16 bit. No, it, it should run fine. They've showed gameplay of it literally running yeah. on the Switch and then in the open world, and, and it, it, it runs fine. You can see the image quality isn't quite as good as the PS4 version, especially if you're playing like PS4 Pro because that game's enhanced on PS4 Pro. Yep. That's so I, I played, played it. it. Yep. Uh, so it looks very sharp and crisp. But I mean, like, if you've played, I, I think what it could be the difference is if you've seen like Dragon Quest 10 on like maybe like the the PS4 and then Dragon Quest 10 like on the Wii or sometimes like that, just maybe a little bit sharper, you know. But it looks the geometry is the same. Everything's kind of the same. It's just resolutions. Just yeah, it, it's going to be what we see with the typical Unreal Engine 4 game on the Switch comparing to a PS4 game. You're not going to get like the 1080 resolution on switch you're going to probably have it scaled down to 720p but you can have all the same geometry most of the same textures the lighting some of the textures will be scaled down just to suit the hardware better but i mean it's gonna know, be all gonna about be the like gameplay a, anyway so yeah it's gonna be like a dragon ball fighters situation mm. yeah i think everyone should check it out it's a it's a very good game so um everyone should check that out so we get and the next one there's a ton of extra content that that's what i'm actually really excited to get into that's that why yeah. That's why I really want to play because I, I beat it on the PS4, but after the credits, there is like a whole other game. So I started playing. I was like, you know what? I'm going to wait for the Switch version because that's when we started hearing about the extra content. And now we see the the 16 bit mode or whatnot, the 8 bit mode. Uh, yeah, I'm on board for that. I'm going to play all the way through it that way. And then your ears aren't going to bleed either if you're using headphones. 
because yeah, the music that, isn't as bad. That, that soundtrack is caught ass. I'm sorry. The music was really bad. Yeah. It was <laughs> really bad on the PS4. So this one's actually, it's orchestrated. So it's going to be yeah. a lot better. Not very good. Um, but yes, yeah, so everyone check that one out. It's going to be good. It's man, it's going to be a couple, next couple months. Going to be, going to be packed. Going to be packed. Uh, Dark type. Super chat says, Hey guys, I've got a question for everyone. What Xbox exclusive franchise would you want to see on the switch that isn't already on it? I'm going to say replay. Halo. Rare replay. Rare replay. Interesting. Okay. Like, I mean, I, I can see that. Xbox exclusive as in like it's Microsoft still. Owns it, does, it. it does say franchise though, Sean. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I'm going to go with Halo because I want yeah, to see Master Halo, Chief I want to see that on the mm. switch. That'd be cool. I would, I would say like, I think Jade Empire isn't on any, anything else, but Microsoft, right? You could say Conker's bad for today or Conker's. <laughs> I'm gonna go with Jade Empire, but I don't know if that's for, if we can do. <laughs> it's not on PlayStation, right? Jade Empire. So uh, no, no, it's still they so, they uh they brought it up to the backwards compatible on the Xbox One, but it's that's where it is. Yeah, it's Jade em- give me give me Jade Empire. That'd be okay. great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess Halo or Forza because the Switch really needs a good racing game. Would Forza work though without the analog triggers? I guess it'd just be. You'd have Very to map it to the difficult. right. You have to map it to the right stick, and like that would be like the accelerator, I guess. I don't know. That's all I can yeah, think of. Could find some. You could use the Labo. <laughs> Man, they really didn't think you of like. Didn't like, say like, anything else. Just say Labo. Just they use, really didn't think of simulation Labo racing <laughs> when they brought when they made the Pro Controller or even the Joy-Con. Uh, there you go. Um, I guess that's uh, that's everything. That's all. Discord questions, Evan. Yep, everything's done. Got all the super chats here. I believe that's everything there. Uh, cool. That's uh, the show for tonight. Spawncast episode one twenty four. Let me go around here to everyone. Sean, where can they find you? you can find me on RGT eighty five. We just passed two hundred and thirty five thousand subscribers, which is absolutely insane. So thank you guys for enjoying the stuff. And my Sega Genesis mini video did fantastic. I was very happy to see that. You never know with retro related stuff how it's going to go. But yeah, um, this upcoming week, um, there's going to be lots of stuff. We'll of course look at the NES games when they drop because there'll probably be some horrible special edition another special probably clue clue land special edition because they just seem to pick maybe next worst. month though next month might be good we'll see. next month might be good um yeah. and then of course tomorrow or monday you'll be a um pro controller review i'm also doing another switch accessory review that i think some people are going to be very interested in um just a bunch of stuff happening this week obviously with gamescom so yeah busy week cool and then uh what about oj where can they find him man yeah, you guys can find me right here on YouTube. Um, I do a lot of streaming, so I stream pretty much every single day. I streamed every single day this week. So um, if you like streaming and fan interaction, I'll be, um, I do that. I cover a lot of Nintendo uh, stuff. I cover a lot of RPG games and all that. And um, I'll be doing um, Astral Chain video uh, this week. I also have an Astral Chain giveaway on the channel. So if you want to have a chance to, uh, to win that, just subscribe to the channel. And uh, yeah, anything else that I'm doing. Um, other just news videos and stuff like that I'll be doing. Uh, that and the gamescom i'll be covering that and i'll be streaming the indie world so if you're gonna be up early it'll be 6 a.m for me so i'll be streaming oh, geez, that, that west coast man <laughs> yeah so Fighting back <laughs> if you want to watch i'll be there so yeah there you go what about what about nate they can find me on twitter at direct feed games there's a link to my youtube channel there where you will find footage of games directly uh just have footage of random switch eShop games retail games next week i think I think I have a couple of embargoed games coming up. Ooh. Not too Wait, sure. Wait, when's that? When's that next discussion video, Nate? I don't know. Maybe Monday. Oh, we'll see how the Nintendo. I say Nate's about to. Show he's the, about to have a victory lap there on camera. Yeah, I'll have a victory lap this don't week with Ori coming to Switch. So that'll be fun because people would still come to this chat room at times and say I was lying. Look at that lie. It just came true. You know, I just pulled Ori out of my ass and guessed it would come to Switch in February. So yeah, who the guy who used to say that, I know you'll never come back, so go to hell. Uh, yeah. But... <laughs> well, he, changed, he changed his name probably. It's not yeah, Nate if it's did. not Spite. Yeah. Yeah, so, oh, man. Yeah, so maybe a discussion video this upcoming week, see how Gamescoms go. Until then, I'll probably be on the switch playing some friday the 13th for some unexplainable reason okay because you can't you can't you can't be bothered to change the cartridge out i was playing fire emblem earlier today oh. but i kind of want to like just well now you're stuck fire emblem's in the, in the system what do you do now 
Yeah, but I got the system right next to me. Ah, uh, okay, got it, got it. And then uh, Evan, what about you, man? Just uh, on Twitter, Kimrix Project. Uh, you can follow me there if you want to see any updates for things I'm doing, places I'm going for conventions. If I'm going to be tweaking anything on the Spawnwave channel for stuff, and uh, just I post everything up there. Don't forget, uh, apparently next get... month is Ass Month according to RGT. So if you want to get that <laughs> hashtag going on Twitter, that'd be great. Maybe we can get Evan streaming uh, Damon X Machina on Mixer when he's playing through it. Even yeah, I could take her around. There. Maybe me and Evan can do a video about multiplayer or something at some point. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I should get that Mixer account going since we don't have to worry about it getting claimed over there. That'd be good. Okay. Maybe, that... maybe people should be streaming Friday the 13th on Switch. You're not wrong. Nah. There good. you go. <laughs> uh, that's going to do it here, though, for the Spawncast. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you guys next Saturday night, 9 p.m. Eastern time. Thank you.